this week on a brand new SAS podcast. I'm gonna tell you what I said last night. You can bleep me, let editing bleep me, cut the pee. I don't care. I told if I'm OKC, I would have told Paul George, you want to be traded. You got, eat, you can eat it. I told Paul George, eat it. You just read up here. You just read up here. You're gonna be a professional and you're gonna play. We supposed to be the losers, but we win it no. They used to laugh at us, now we win it no. They used to tell me never in my lifetime. I guess they wasn't in their right mind. Underdog. <laughs> yes, sir. What's going on, folks? Welcome to a brand new exciting episode of Strong Arm Sports Podcast, the realest sports talk pod in all the land. True. We took last week off, and we yeah. still realist in all the land. True. Hey, man, we are back to wrap up the previous couple of weeks in sports in dramatic fashion, man. I'm, I'm kind of excited, LaParis. I can't even really, I can't get into my regular intro. It's a lot to talk about. I'm hyped to be back, man, if this happens to be the first time you've watched our show here on YouTube. But if you're listening on any of our various podcast channels, I'm one half of the show. I go by the name of K-Spade Prospect. And I'm your boy, Paris 57 and together we form Strong Arm Sports Spade. Man! Yeah. Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Hey, Spade. First of all, before we get into what the meat and the potatoes, which I know is the reason why everybody's here, we got to start the show on a sadder note, Spade. I got to start with, uh, we want to give a uh, rest in peace to uh, the hefty lefty, Lorenz, the quarterback, Lorenz, Jared Lorenz, y'all already know the big quarterback that was, uh, he played for Kentucky, quarterback for the Kentucky Wildcats. He ended up Going to the Giants, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say he won a Super Bowl with the New York Giants. And um, he, unfortunately, he passed away this past week. And I also want to send out our prayer spade to the to the young man that was that's on the Miami Dolphins. Kendrick Norton Spade is his name. He was yeah. in a, a very bad car accident and had to have his arm amputated. So we want to start there. We want to say rest in peace to the big hefty lefty. And we want to say, you know... Sent out our prayers to Kendrick Norton, who was in that just terrible car accident that, that cost this young man his career. You know, Spade, we always talk about on this show, aside from being, you know, big sports fans and all that, Spade, we want these young men to live long, healthy lives. And, you know, we, of course, we want to watch them, you know, play sports and have a living. But, hey, bottom line is the young man is still alive. Unfortunately, he had to have his arm amputated, but he is in our prayers, Spade. Anything else you want to add? Uh, just prayers up to both both families, man. Uh, sure. You know, dealing with loss is something that, unfortunately, everybody has been there. And if you haven't, just keep living. <laughs> you will eventually. And sure. also prayers up to the, the family of, uh, you know, Kendrick Norton, man. Because although it's easy for us to say, hey, man, at least he still got his life, which that is definitely, you know, the, the good thing to say. It's also... It's super sad, man. It's catastrophic. I'm sure this kid played football his entire life. Probably started playing right. at a very young age, and you know, to 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 have that accident, man. And as a parent, I tell my kids all the time, man. The the biggest fear of of me as a parent is my kids behind the wheel, man. Because uh, so many times you can be doing the right thing in the car, and so many other elements can can make something go bad somebody else not paying attention weather elements uh right. even the condition of some of the roads or, or the tires the vehicle you drive and there's so many things that can cost you to for a split second lose control of your vehicle so just urge everybody man to uh you know whatever distractions you got let that mess wait it's not worth your life or anybody else's or your limbs man and you know prayers up to those guys man and their families that's right man spade i also want to share some good news can i share some good news Please, man. We starting like that. Give me some good news. Yeah, spare some good news. Ezekiel Elliott will not be suspended. Yes, yes. That's some good news, Cowboy it's fans. Like no football show, bro. Spade, I, I gotta share, bro. He, it was it was speculation that he may get a game. I seen people tweeting. He, they oh Zeke deserves six games. He don't get it. Three games. Yada yada yada. Ezekiel Elliott. Will not be suspended for that nonsense that happened with that with that security guard that he chest bumped. I mean, they was just chest bumping like how you do when you celebrate a basket. 
He chest bumped him, dude fell all down. Oh my gosh. But Ezekiel Elliott will not be suspended by the commission in the NFL. Spay, let's get into the meat and the potatoes about what's going on. And that's NBA free agency and trades. Been a lot, a lot, a lot has happened, man. A lot has happened. Especially since our last show, which is kind of good. It's kind of good that we didn't have a show last week. And I'm kind of glad the news that happened last night happened last night and didn't happen after we recorded the show. So shout out to Kawhi for making that happen. Spay, I got to ask you, bro. Do you want me to just run through all the free agents that signed? Or do you want to just jump right into the Kawhi news? Uh, Let's kind of run through the big names. And then we'll go back and do some deep dives. Let's do that. Okay. You know, people listening might not know what all happened. Okay, so a lot has happened, y'all. A ton. So let's start with Boston. I'm, I'm going in order. Some, you know, Atlanta made a sign, whatever. But Boston, they, they ended up getting Enos Cantor and Kemba Walker. Spade, you got to tell you got to tell the people, not not now, but me and you was talking last night, and you was like, Enos Cantor didn't sign with Portland because we're going to talk about all this, y'all. So just yeah. sit back, relax, put your seat in recline. It's, it, you're going to be here for a while. Okay, so we, we know Boston got Canton and Kimber Walker. We already know Brooklyn ended up getting Kyrie, Wilson Chandler, Kevin Durant, uh, DeAndre Jordan, Garrett Temple. Terry Rozier went to Charlotte. Of course, my Chicago Bulls signed uh, Sadoransky and Thad Young. Shout out to the Chicago Bulls. We look good in summer league last night. Um, Dallas Ooh. ended up getting... What you say, say? Zatarans. You, say? you talking about that rice? Sadoransky. I got some rice. Play- Bro, wow, that's what we doing. You just gonna interrupt me? Wow, you just me, said me, that like y'all grabbed great. somebody. Okay, okay, do bro, you play, do you let play. me be great. Can I be great? Yeah. Dal- Dallas ended up getting Seth Curry, they brought back JJ Barea. We already know they uh signed uh Chris Sapp to a huge deal, and they got Bobon, mm-hmm. so it's no more Bobby and Toby. We already know Tobias Harris and Bobon had an, a, a good little relationship, but yeah. uh. Detroit signed Dead Rose that Spade is not happy with. Once Spade to touch base on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Golden State ended up keeping Clay, we know. They signed Willie Cali Stein and they bust the trade for D'Angelo Russell, which we're going to talk about. Late, late. I told y'all we're going to be here for a while. Uh, Houston ended up bringing back the Rat Pack. They ended up keeping Austin Rivers, uh, Gerald Green, Daniel House. Who else? Indiana signed Jeremy Lamb, Malcolm Brogdon. Uh, uh, T.J. McConnell and C.J. Wilcox, the Clippers. Wow. Okay. The Clippers kept Patrick Beverly. They got Rodney Magruder. They got Kawhi Leonard. Yes, they got Kawhi Leonard. We're going to talk about it, y'all. Lakers got uh, Jared Dudley. Wait, you left Danny out somebody Green. with the Clippers. Oh, Mo Harkless? Mo Harkless, I'm sorry. Who else? Have, oh, I, oh I Paul George. Paul Jesus George. Christ. Okay, okay. God, they got Paul... They got Paul George, too. We're going to talk about it. Lakers got Jared Dudley, Troy Daniels, Danny Green. They the re-signed Caldwell Pope, JaVel McGee. Memphis ended up signing back uh, Valanchunas. Miami, Spade Squad, traded for Jimmy Butler. Spade, you got to talk about that trade. Because that, mm-hmm. like, we thought we thought Dragic got traded, but he didn't. Something crazy happened there. Milwaukee brought back George Hill. They brought back Brooke Lopez. They signed Wes Matthews. They brought back Middleton. They signed Robin Lopez. They, uh, I mean, they got both the Lopez brothers, which is crazy. They, this is the first time they playing together since Stafford, if I'm not mistaken. Minnesota got Noah Vonley, and they signed Jake, Jake Lehman and Jordan Bell. See who else. Okay, New Orleans, eh, they signed J.J. Reddick. Darius Miller, they brought back Darius Miller. That's Spade man, Darius Miller. New York, when everything fell apart for the Knicks, Spade, you know, everybody was like, oh, they about to get Zion. They about to get KD. They about to get Kyrie. Then when that kind of fell apart, they was like, oh, well, they could still get Kimba, all that stuff. They ended up with Julius Randle, who Spade, you know we love. We love this dude. Julius Randle was a beast. Bucket. Yeah, he a, he a beast. They signed Wayne Ellington. They signed Alfred Payton. They got Todd Gibson. They got Bobby Porters. They got Reggie Bullock. So they was like, yo. We just about to fill out the roster. Of course, we know uh, Oklahoma City. They brought back Nerlens Noel. Oklahoma City also uh, got Alec Burks and Mike Muscala. Orlando, Orlando resigned Vucevic, Mike Carter Williams, Terrence Ross, Alfaruk Aminu. Philly 
Stein Al Horford Spade, which was a head scratcher to me, but maybe you can go in depth on that. Let me know what that was about. And they also signed Kylo Quinn. Uh, they brought back James Ennis. They brought back Tobias Harris. They brought back Mike Scott. Um, let me see. Make sure I ain't missing nobody with Philly. Oh, they signed Ru Ruel N N Neto. I guess that's his name. Somebody gonna correct me. Y'all know I oh, jack yeah. names up. Yeah. Uh, Phoenix signed Frank Kaminsky, Ricky Rubio. Portland signed Rodney Hood back, Mario Hazonia. Um, Sacramento, uh, Corby Joseph, Trevor Ariza, Rash uh, Rashawn Holmes, Dwayne Dedman, Harrison Barnes, uh, San Antonio got Damari Cadwell. They brought back Rudy Gay. Toronto, uh, they, they, they lost. They, they signed somebody named Mike Thomas. Eh, I don't know who that is, but uh, they don't have Kawhi no more. Utah made a big move, Spade. They got Bo Bojan Bogdanovic, the one from Indiana. We know it's mm -hmm. two Bogdanovic. They got the one from Indiana. He was hooping. That's a that, good man. pick out for them. I think that's a good. Yeah, they gave him. They gave him seventy three million for four man, years, bro. Yeah, yeah. They gave him. They gave him big money. They also signed uh, Emmanuel Mudiay, Jeff Green, Ed Davis, and Washington ended up signing Isaiah Thomas. Uh, they brought back Thomas Bryant. Uh, they signed Ish Smith. And that's about it, Spade. So what do you want to start this mess with? Spade, I guess we uh, got to start with Kawhi. Let, we got to. We okay, got go to. Ahead. Nah, I don't, okay. nah, hold up. What, what, Kawhi made everybody wait. We're going to make everybody wait, too. Nah, I don't want to start We making them wait, Spade. We got to wait and wait. Wow. What you want to do? I, I, I try, y'all. Spade, I want... I, 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 if we, okay, if we're not starting with... If we're not starting with that, I want you to start with... Uh, let's start with the Kevin Durant... Kyrie to Brooklyn. Let's let's start there. We already know that uh we already know that Kevin Durant will probably more than likely be out the whole year. But yeah. we know we know Brooklyn traded D'Angelo Russell out of there. He went to Golden State. But I gotta ask you, Spade, do you feel this makes the Brooklyn the Brooklyn team a better team? Of course, we know when KD get back, we already know. But with Kyrie with the pieces they have, how do you feel about Brooklyn? This year. This year with DeAndre Jordan, KD, you know, they got Kyrie, uh, Wilson Chandler, uh, Temple. We already know, like I said, we know KD ain't going to be there. Talk to me about the Brooklyn team, though. This I year. love Wilson Chandler, man. You you know I'm a Wilson Chandler fan. I like Wilson Chandler. Yeah. They got pieces, man. Uh, on paper, they definitely got better. And I hate to do this to you, boy, Kyrie, because sometimes you claim him as a New Jersey, but... The success of that team this year start and stop with Kyrie Irving, man. If Kyrie come in on that, you know, I, I'm the leader, and I don't know. I feel like he kind of clashed with the younger guys in Boston when he took on that, when he took that role. When he took that, uh, the young guys got to learn, you know, in this league, you got to do this, you got to do that. I feel like if he come in with that attitude, man, I, I don't know how it's going to work. I really don't. Now, look, you ain't got to be – you got to be a genius to know once Kevin Durant is back, the boys going they going to win games, man. Like that's Word. just too much offensive firepower. But we so seen think Kyrie gonna... get in that in that in that bag, man, where he looked to score, he don't necessarily look to set other people up. And if you look at the success of Brooklyn, one of the things that made them good was the fact that they were kind of like a three, four headed monster. You never knew was it going to be D'Lo's night, was it going to be Dinwiddie's Word. night, was it going to be Lavert's night, you know what I'm saying? Or whoever else. So if Kyrie come in, and I hate to put it on Kyrie because I, I feel like it sounds like I'm attacking Kyrie. I'm not doubting Kyrie's skills at all. Kyrie is a better player than D'Lo. What I don't know is if Kyrie can buy into that plan the same way D'Lo bought into it. And that's that's really going to be the deciding factor in my opinion. Spade, you said you really had a problem with them signing DeAndre Jordan too. Yeah, they already got DeAndre Jordan on their team. and His name Ooh. is Jared Allen. His name is Jared Allen. Neither one of those guys can shoot. Neither one of those guys got like a, a, a go-to move. Neither one of them dudes got a back-to-the-basket game. They both are rim protectors. They both can kind of finish it if you throw it up high. They both can kind of get their points out the mud. So what I question is, bring in DJ in, do that stunt, the growth of Jared Allen? I feel like it kind of does. And I was talking about this somewhere, and they was like, oh, no, they are not the better player. Uh, I mean, they're not the same player. DeAndre Jordan is much better at, you know, you could just throw the ball into the into the block and, and he could put it in the hole. And I'm like, I mean, we don't know if Jared Allen can't do that because he wasn't asked to do that. He wasn't the first or second 
scoring option on that team. He got all his points out the mud. And I just feel like for DeAndre Jordan, who's getting older, who comes with a, a much more expensive price tag than Jared Allen, I don't know if I would have pulled the trigger on that. Then again, if that's what it took to get Kevin Durant, then I'd have did the same thing they did. But on paper, I don't, I don't love the acquisition of DeAndre Jordan at all, bro. I just don't feel like he brings something to that team that they didn't already have. I, I like this, man. I like I like the acquisition of DeAndre Jordan because Why? I feel like defensively he gonna give you more. One of the problems with Jared Allen was against against other bigs, he always was in foul troubles, babe. That's why he couldn't play long. Play twenty some minutes. He had played twenty some minutes a game. He had, he had a great game, like in the first quarter. Then he'd be in foul trouble, and you won't. Bring, they won't. They couldn't bring him back to like the fourth quarter because he was in foul trouble. I feel like DeAndre Jordan is a much a way better defender. Then uh way, way better. I feel he's a way better defender than than Jared Allen. Right. And that's not saying Jared Allen is bad. I'm saying he always in foul trouble. He's he always young. in foul he trouble. He gonna figure it out. He gotta yeah, figure it out. I, mean, I get it. I get it. But I mean, Spade, me and you talked off camera about this. We felt every team that thought they had that that feel they have a chance. This is their year to go get it. Like so. That's true. We felt like that's this true. is their year. So if if. You know what I mean? DeAndre Jordan only signed, like, KD and Kyrie ended up taking less money to get DeAndre Jordan to the $10 million mark. It's only $10 million. So even if it's not working out, you can easily be like, you know what? You wash your hands with it, and they can, they can move a $10 million contract, especially compared to what we see these other guys getting paid. These other guys is getting astronomical amounts of money. $10 million ain't nothing to move on, on the open market when DeAndre Jordan can hit the open, you know, if they be like, yo, DeAndre ain't working out. He's starting old boy growth. He he isn't a fit. They can move a ten million dollar contract. So I don't I don't you mind. Are absolutely a, right. I don't mind a DeAndre Jordan. Uh, you are trying to strike lightning in the bottle this year? Like I said, I know KD is out, so we ain't going to see the Nets at full strength until probably next year. I mean, we would. I say we we assume KD is going to take his time and be out the whole year, right? We hope absolutely, okay, absolutely. I, yeah, no I reason so for too. him to even. Yeah. I, I agree, Spade. Now I don't want him to rush back. I don't want him don't to rush either. back. But um, he should have learned his lesson with rushing back with what just happened in Golden State. So hopefully he learned his lesson and be like, "Yo, I'm going to take the year." Spade. So you do you feel like they are a better team though? Like they are not necessarily record wise. I mean, we know once they get KD, they're a way better team. But not necessarily record wise. But do you think they are a better team than better than last year with the people that they got this year? Yeah, they are. I mean, okay. It ain't no That's way for them not. Yeah, they are easy. You was you was Spade, wanting I, me to say I ain't think they was. Yeah, I, I do. Go I ahead. Did. I did, but I mean, oh, man, grow up. I mean, I, I I feel they are a much better team. You already know, man. Kyrie from Jersey. Now you're gonna be close to home. You're gonna be happy. Kyrie gonna be happy now. Spade. He was yeah, in Boston. They winning. He was Spade, happy in Boston was in, when they were winning. My, my dude, he was in right. Boston. You already know how them Boston fans get. You're, come yeah, on, Spade. If I know that and you know that, then Kyrie should have known that too. Yet he skipped yeah, he, his ass on up for the Boston Big Beans. All right, he's trying to he's trying to make it work. Spade, you want to talk about uh, want to talk about Boston next? They we gotta go to getting, Boston. We, they ended up uh, getting Cantor and Kimba and yep. Spade. If I mean maybe I read your and tweets Luke, wrong. Yeah. Maybe I read your tweets wrong. But uh, you, do you not like Kimba to Boston? Wait, so let me say this, right? Go, uh, wait, uh, we, uh, what? We huh? wanted to see Kimba out of Charlotte, right? Okay. We wanted to see him on a team that, that had a chance. Uh, a chance yeah. to possibly contend for a championship. A team that could display this guy's talents. So for mm-hmm. that reason, I'm glad he out of Charlotte. But when he landed in Boston, I'm like, ah, uh, not Boston, bro. I don't know how I feel about Kimba in Boston. Don't get me wrong. Kimba's in a much better place. He's got much better pieces around him. He's in a bigger market. All that stuff right there plays in Kimba's favor. I just was hoping to see him somewhere else. It's crazy like where, as it sounds. Like as where? crazy you as it sounds, I'd rather see him in New York. Okay, and I, I would and rather Spade. see him in New York. Because you know what I think? I think the Go fan ahead. base in New York would rally around Kimba. And I think they would be, look, man, you know. Go up there and have a couple bad games in front of that Boston crowd. What they going to yell at the stands? Come on, bro. We we know how it go in Boston, man. I just don't really do. want Kimba there. I, I really don't want him there. But he's in a better place. Can't, can't complain if you're coming from Charlotte and you land there with Boston. It's a lot of pressure on those guys to 
perform this year, man. You got Kyrie out, Rozier out. Everybody's going to be looking at the young guys, expecting them to show flashes of what they showed in that rookie season. So Brown and Tatum both got to step up. Gordon Hayward still looking like, you know, I'm, hey, that injury was unfortunate. It don't change the fact that it's expectations there on that team. And now everybody looking at Danny Ainge like, we thought Danny Ainge was some type of genius, bro. He had all them damn first-round picks. And and it don't look like he done flipped it into nothing. It don't look like he's flipped mm. it into nothing. So the pressure's on for Boston this year. And Kemba just walked in, and the pressure is on Kemba too. Kemba, you got to perform this year. You guys got to perform this year. Spade, I'm going to tell the people what I told you off camera when we talked about it probably like a – whenever this happened, maybe like a week ago. I, right. I told Spade, was like, yo, I would have liked to see him in New York. And I'm like, me too. But you want to anyway. know what? I told Spade, I said, look, if you're going to go somewhere – look, if you're going to go somewhere and lose, then you might as well stay in Charlotte, lose, and get 200 M's. But then reports True. came out that Michael Jordan was like, yo, we're not giving Kimber the Supermax. I'm not about to – Go into the luxury tax. This is the reports. I'm not about to go to the into the luxury tax for us to still lose just to keep Kimba. So I told Spade, I said, look, if you if you gonna if you gonna go to New York and lose, you might as well have went back to Charlotte and get that bread and lose and at least be rich as hell. Yeah. Michael Jordan pulled the supermax, said that's not happening. So then you, you might as well go somewhere and win. And the I think the best, especially with Kyrie leaving. The opening was there for Kimba in Charlotte. You still gonna get your bread, but it, I mean, um, in Boston, excuse me. You still gonna get your bread. You still gonna get a, mm -hmm. a, a big ass amount of money in Boston, and you also gonna win. So yeah, that's why I feel like Kimba went. Kimba probably wanted to be in New York too, but then he's like, sense. man, if if I'm gonna lose, I might as well go back to Charlotte. But if if I can't have Charlotte lose and get the bag, then I might as well go go to Boston. Go get less money and at least be in the playoffs every year and, and be because we never Spade. I want to say we. I could be wrong. Somebody gonna correct me. I think we only seen Kimba in the playoffs one time, if at all. Has Kimba ever been to the playoffs? They might have went to the playoffs once and got swept. Like I'm, I don't I, even I don't, know. I might have to look it yeah, up. Yeah, I, I, I want to say I want to say no, but somebody gonna correct me in the comment section. So that's why I feel like Kimba went to Boston. Could could he have went? Other places that probably would have been a better fit, probably. But I think Kimber looked around and was like, Man, two years. I, at least, I, at least if I know I can go to, if I go to Boston, we're going to win games. We're going to. I, I got a good coach up there, a solid coach up there. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. You know the landscape in Boston is about winning, which Kimber never been around. So I, that's why I feel like he went up there. But Spade, I also want you to talk about Enos Cantor. Yeah, man, Cantor. Uh, you know, Cantor's one of those players to get on social, man, and he, you know, yeah. to me, he's like the, he's the great value, Joel Embiid, when it comes to his social media presence. He will engage in a back and forth with other players. He'll clap back at fans or, or whoever right. else, but he said something that <laughs> shocked me because, you know, we look at Portland, we don't really talk much about Portland and the way they take care of their players, but on the outside looking in, it kind of looked like, it looked like they they the type of organization that a player would want to be at. The only person we really seen shipped out like that was Lamarcus Aldridge, and he wanted out. So, uh, Cantor stepped in this year. Of course, uh, Yusuf Nurkic was hurt. Cantor stepped in and was big for this team in the postseason, man. And he say what you will about him, but he was a part of the the reason that that team for the first time made it out of the first round. And mm -hmm. well, not the first time, but made it out the second round. I mean, for the first time. And uh, Cantor said that. When he was presented with his, his contract, they gave him six minutes. They told him he only oh had goodness. six minutes to make a decision. And that made him feel like if if you presented me with an offer that you're not going to give me a fair amount of time to mull over, then that made me feel like it ain't in my best interest. Like it must be something in here you're trying to make me hurry up and sign and get past. And for that reason, I want out. So I respect Cantor for walking away from that. I like Cantor there in Portland. I really do. But mm -hmm. six minutes, bro, you know, it take me longer than six minutes to decide what the hell shirt I'm going to wear every day. Like, that's that's right. not enough time for me to decide where I'm signing for the next couple of years of my life. And I really couldn't believe, I, I really couldn't even believe they tried that shit, man. But again, that's a pretty good pickup. You got Al Horford, who's out. Um, I think Al Horford is a better defender than Cancer. Of oh, course, definitely. I... 
I even think Al Horford can stretch the floor better than Cantor. But down on that block, man, Cantor is a bucket. Say what you will about him. He know how to put it in the hoop. And this is going to be the best team Kimball Walker has played with since he left UConn, bro. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm excited in that regard. I just don't like Boston, bro. I just don't I, I like Boston. It. Bro, I get it. I want to say this. I want to say this to Cantor, too. One thing about, we already know Cantor, what Cantor lack is his defense, like his defense. That's what, mm-hmm. that's what. Yo, they, they feed it to Cantor, they run him, they, they put him in the pick and roll. When one thing Boston do well is play good team defense. Well, one thing they did well, one thing they did do well, we don't know since Kyrie going and now Kimber there, and one thing they did well was play good uh, team defense. So mm-hmm. I, I feel like that can actually help Cantor. If, even if Boston isn't as good defensively as a team as they was in previous years, I felt like it still want to help Cantor out if they're at least close to that. Because when you know with rotation and all that, you got athletic wings like Brown and um, and uh, Tatum. That that can definitely help Cantor out defensively. And like you said, when you put Cantor, Cantor is a double double guy. Like yeah, he's a double he's, double guy. He's one of the best offensive rebounders in the league. Yo, you look, it'd be like six minutes. Cantor had twelve and eight in six minutes. He's I'm telling you, he's amazing. His problem was defensively, and I felt like him going to Boston, that can actually help him out team defense-wise. One-on-one, he's probably still going to get cooked. But team defense, I felt like that's going to help Cantor out. Yeah, man. So, and maybe Brad Stevens you, can can motivate, you know. Yeah, he can. That's, that's true. Let me tell you where I want to go next. I want to go to Charlotte. We talked about Kemba leaving Charlotte. I want to talk about Charlotte. And they signed Terry, Rose, Terry Rozier from Boston. Three years, $58 million. And I was seeing some people saying they overpaid for Terry Rozier. That uh, Charlotte was bidding against themselves. How do you feel about that? I don't feel like they overpaid. I mean, I, I think Rozier kind of <coughs> showed what he could do on the on the big stage. I know he didn't have the best season last year, but nobody on that team had the best season. Right. And, you know, if you're looking to rebuild, you, you want a guy who wants to be the man to rebuild around. And I'm not saying that you rebuild around Rozier. I'm not saying he's the face of the franchise. But he made it apparent last year that he felt like he made a big impact for that Celtic team on the court. He was going to go somewhere where he could be on the court. And even if that team is bad for a few years while they figure it out or while they make moves, you you got a guy who at least wants to be the man. I don't hate it. I mean, don't get me wrong. Charlotte ain't going to be well for them this year. But I, I don't hate the move. I don't hate the signing at all. I, I, <clears throat> Spade, I like the move too, but I just want Charlotte to get their shit together, man. Charlotte what is that? A, what, what is what their is shit it? together? Yeah, because, I, I mean, for Charlotte. Like, let's be honest. Is there any moves they can make that can make them a contender? I, I'm not even necessarily, Spade, I'm not even necessarily saying they got to be a contender. But, Spade, they, the playoffs? They can't make the playoffs? Come on. They made it twice with Kimba. I want, 2014 Spade, and 2016. I want them to be a little, I want them to be a little more consistent with making the playoffs, Spade. I don't think that's too much to ask in the East. So what? Let me ask you this: If you the landscape of the league for a few years have been uh, big threes, right? Mm-hmm. Big three here, big three there. This year it seems like that narrative is changing to the two-headed monster. Like Word. all of the top tier teams have two top stars. Word. Who was Kimba's other top star ever? I mean, we can say mm-hmm. Dwight. Yeah, nobody. That's right. I feel like I feel like you can do it another way. I, let me throw out, let me throw out Indiana this past year. I mean, aside from Depot, I mean they just had a bunch of scrappy players, Spade. That's true. And I felt, I felt like Kimba, Kimba was their All Star. Depot was Indiana's lone All Star. Now we know they had some guys in the mix for most improved players. So I mean, you can fill out a roster without having that. And I get your point. Without having that two headed monster, that three, that uh, big three, I feel like you can still, you should still be able to be. I mean, Kimball Kimba was all world this past year. And and they, I, I want to say they was like the 11th seed, 10th or 11th seed. Like, I'm just asking them to be more consistent. Now Kimball's gone. Now they got Rozier. Spade, I think we both agree Kimball's better than Rozier, right? That's not necessarily absolutely. saying Rozier's going to be bad. But I'm no, just saying absolutely. Kimball's an all-star player. Yeah. And I just, if you're going to build like this, I feel like you got to get a bunch of scrappy players like Indiana, maybe trying, I mean, in the Charlotte too, so maybe don't nobody want to go down to North Carolina. Ain't nothing to do down there. 
But I feel like you gotta so, build like Indiana just did. You go get a scrappy dude, uh, like like Oladipo, not Charlotte. I'm just saying. I'm using Indiana for example. Indiana went out, got Oladipo, and they built a bunch of a scrappy team, man. And I, yeah. and I felt like um, Spade. Indiana shocked a lot of people. People didn't expect Indiana to be this good this past year. They were nope. they played amazing. And then Depot yeah, got did. hurt. And Depot got hurt. So I'm, that's all I'm asking. I want Charlotte to at least be in the mix. I ain't saying they got to win but, no championship because like, the way it's looking, it's looking like it's only the top four, top five teams in the East that got a chance to at least make it to the finals. So I'm just asking them to be scrappy and be in the mix. Can they be in the I mix? I mean, they was tied for ninth. Like, the Hornets and Heat had the same record, 39-43. Okay. and 43, And both of those teams was one game out of that eighth place spot. Okay. And so, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not saying that's good enough. And, yeah, and maybe you got to look at the Heat Charlotte. This year. Look right? what he yeah. just did. Yeah. But, I mean, and, and we'll, we'll get to that. But another thing, too, you you looking at Charlotte. I don't know, man. I, I don't want to put this pressure on Mike, man. You know I'm a Jordan fan, but yeah, yeah let's talk I mean, about Jordan for a minute. Let's let's talk about Jordan yeah, for a minute. Let's talk about it. Jordan has kind of made none of his basketball decisions <clears throat> in terms of him being an executive have paid off. And I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it a stack with y'all. None That's of them has paid off. He no don't have any Jordan brand athletes that that has paid off. Look. Dog, they dropped the ball with Kawhi. Kawhi was a Jordan Brand athlete, and they lowballed that brother, and he left and went to fucking New Balance, and then he got a ring. This would have been the first Jordan Brand athlete to get a ring, but they lowballed him. If you just look at the athletes chosen in that one big draft where everybody was like, do you go mellow or Brun? Jordan made the executive decision to go mellow. He could have had Brun. He went mellow. So, I mean... Jordan, I don't want to come for Jordan, but Jordan nah, decisions man, don't be it, You gotta come for him bro. as an executive. This is they don't be to it, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His decisions ain't it, bro. Yeah, I, I saw a graphic the other day that was like Nike athletes, Jordan brand athletes, Adidas athletes, and it was just talking about the accolades, how many MVPs, and how. And, and I know somebody gonna listen to this podcast and say, "What they got to do with shoes?" But they got a lot to do with it. On the business end, trust me, man. Like when a Jordan Brand athlete win MVP, which Russell Westbrook did do, that mm-hmm. looks good for Jordan Brand. When a Jordan Brand athlete wins Defensive Player of the Year or MVP of the season or win a championship or win Finals MVP, that kind of stuff right there looks good on the brand. It generates more opportunity, more revenue, and it also generates a situation where you can go after more athletes. You're looking right now, like, bro, other than other than than shoot who Candace Parker like I don't I don't know what Jordan Brand athlete you can look at right now and say is the I think the, I, the think, blueprint. I think I seen and Maya Moore walking out that tunnel didn't I was it didn't Maya Moore or Candace Parker Nah I got to I think look it up. was Maya Moore I think it was Maya Moore but I mean I mean nothing that's neither well, either way it's a w- WNBA star. Yeah, I'm about to say WNBA players, man. I, I, I don't know what it's paid. I think it's warranted that you get that that we get on Jordan. Look, I love Jordan as a <coughs> basketball player, but let's be let's keep it a buck. Him as an executive has been a fail. Your best, even with Kimba, I think he botched the whole Kimba shit. Kimba, your best player. How you not? He was an all star. He was the Kimba Walker was the re- was the person that was putting people in them stands and Charlotte to come down there and watch them. Hornets, watch them Hornets, and you just to come out and be like, "Yo, I'm not about to be, I'm not about to go on the luxury tax for Kimber Walk- Walker." To me, to Kimber, if I'm Kimber, that's a slap in the face. I'm the, I'm the lone bright spot of this team. Now I know somebody gonna be like, "Well, Jeremy Lamb just got paid." I get it, but but he left. He left. They didn't even keep him. He left. I'm just saying, Spade. I, I gotta agree with you, man. Jordan as an executive, and I know, I know he has. Jordan isn't running it by himself anymore like he was. He done hired some other people to help him help him with but those he the face. He the face. Man, yeah, man. And so Spade, when it go right, he going to get the praise. So when it go bad, he going to get that smoke. That's how it go. We, we, I agree. And we're going to talk about, we're going to later talk about Miami, what Miami just did. And I get it. Miami 
the city compared to Charlotte, the city. It's a no-brainer. People going to want to go to Miami. All I'm saying is if you're not able to make those type of deals, Spade, you can compare. Is it fair that is it fair to say that you can compare Charlotte to Indiana? Like you look at those cities like, shit, don't nobody want to go there either. Don't nobody want to go there. But but yeah. Indiana made some moves. They bust some trades. They got guys like Sabonis. They drafted Miles Turner. They had uh uh they they got uh Bogdanovich from the Nets. Like you gotta just pick up some scrappy guys that just glue guys that just fight and they just want to stay alive. And I don't feel like Jordan has been doing that. You you've been making some questionable trades. You got a bunch of bad contracts. I I'm just I'm just I want them to be better, man. I, I want Charlotte to be better. I, Cause I, I don't see anybody. Of course, if you like people say they overpaid for Terry Rozier, so of course you're going to get some guys if you overpay. They said Charlotte was built bitten against themselves. Like nobody was offering Terry Rozier this much bread, and then Charlotte came back and was like, "Yo, we'll give you another 12 mil." Like they thought Terry Rozier was going to be around 40 mil. Charlotte gave him 58, almost 20. And that's a what year. you gotta do. That's what you gotta do when your decisions don't pay. Like. When you when you ain't got that track record, man, that's what you gotta do. That's exactly what you gotta do when you the underdog and you in a, a spot that people don't want to come. That's what that's what happens. Spade, do we see do we see them? And I get it. They like you said, they was the ninth seed. They was right there. But that was when I'm about to say no see- already. I don't even know where you're going with it. <laughs> I'm about to say, do we see them at least putting up a fight this year, being a little bit better than the ninth seed? Last year, the ninth seed, then the ninth no. seed. No. Okay. Okay. No, we don't. <sighs> Spade, you want you want to go to Miami? Yeah, we want to go to Philly. Let's go to both. We want to go. Okay, let's go to both. So let's 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 start with Miami. First of all, Spade, I gotta I gotta give you some good news. Y'all traded Whiteside. Y'all traded Whiteside to Portland. Yeah. And y'all got back, if I'm not mistaken, who was it? Mo Harkless, Myers Leonard, and Myers Leonard. And then y'all think y'all move Mo Harkless. But y'all yes. got rid of y'all got rid of White Side contract. He went to Portland. A lot of you gonna talk about that Portland situation in a minute, too. But then y'all also traded and got Jimmy Butler. Y'all traded right. y'all traded with the 76ers to get Jimmy Butler. Y'all sent mm-hmm. them Josh Richardson, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Spade. I mean the my my look at Don Corleone. Look at look at look at Pat Riley out here. Don Corleone. Like, look at her. So they bust the move, and they, they, of course, it was also, I mean, it's, it's Miami, so it was also some, uh, some, um, some disarray because we thought Dragic was going to Dallas, but that right. didn't happen. We don't know what happened, how that fell apart. Well, we know what Talk happened. to me about your heat. Talk to me about your heat. We know what happened. Look, man, I don't know what every happened. since, I don't know nothing. Now, you know. Ever since the Miami Heat versus Dallas Mavericks finals, oh, where some about. comments was made about oh. Dirk or whatever, like it's bad blood between Miami and Dallas. The fan bases even know about it. And I can't even lie to you. When I heard, like, okay, Miami and Philadelphia is engaging in talks, a three team trade to send Jimmy <coughs> Butler to Miami. And I was like, okay, who's the third team? And they was like, they were saying it was Dallas. My initial reaction was, oh, shit, the Mavs are working with us to get a player that's kind of dope. Like, I, I really wasn't expecting that. Should have known. Then they come back late, and I ain't talking like 30 minutes later. It was hours later that they come back like, no, we wanted Derek Jones Jr. and, and, and somebody else. And, of course, if that would have been an illegal trade for Miami because the money didn't match. Hmm. And they knew that, man. You know, the Mavs knew that. They tried their best to sabotage that deal. The crazy thing is they are saying that <laughs> Goran Dragic is really good friends with Luka. Mm. Really good friends. Is it Luka or is it Chris Stapps? One of them is really good friends with Goran Dragic. I don't know which one. They had a chance to have an all-European team. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> could have could have been mad Euro up in there, mm-hmm. and get a point guard that is is a off the court friend of one of their cornerstones, and instead of making that deal, you know they wanted to try to sabotage us. That's what I feel like anyway as a Heat fan. But that's neither here nor there. At any rate, 
Uh, Dallas came back and said, no, like that, that Goran Dragic's contract is too high, even though he's on an expiring. I think Goran only got one more year on that deal, maybe two at the max, but I think this is the last year. So it made sense. It would have made sense for Dallas, you know, whatever, but they decided they didn't want to do it. What happened at that point was the deal had to be made. Miami had already sent, well, I mean, it, it wasn't officially done, but you know what I'm saying. Miami had yeah. already sent the rights to Josh Richardson uh, to Philadelphia, and as a result of losing Jimmy Butler, Philadelphia had already broke off Tobias Harris. So you can't come back later and be like, oops, I want out, because so many moves had happened at that point. Philly was looking at Miami like, you guys got to find a way to make the deal work. Jimmy know I already told us that he don't want to be back here. I saw somebody on Twitter, man. It's so funny. Somebody on Twitter was like, I told y'all that Tobias Harris was the Philadelphia 76ers priority. And people told me I was crazy. People told me it was Jimmy Butler. Well, who gets the last laugh now? I told you. And I was like, I want to tweet this guy back and tell him how big of an idiot he is. Jimmy Butler was most definitely the 76ers first priority. But Jimmy Butler told Philly, I don't want to be here. They offered Jimmy and Max. Jimmy said, I do not want to be here. I want to be traded, and I would like to go to Miami. So that mm. made Tobias Harris a priority. <clears throat> Trust me. LaPaz, I always use the club analogy. I've been in the club. Mm. The priority was the chick with the big booty. But. but if somebody got to her before me, now I'm talking to someone else. That don't mean they was a priority. You know what I'm saying? Like, that ain't but. really how it works. So, you know, luckily, something was able to be done with Portland, who had just lost Cantor because they gave Cantor six minutes to sign his deal. So it's what? funny to see how the dominoes just fell in place. They gave Cantor six minutes to sign his deal. Cantor said, I ain't no bitch. I don't know who y'all think I am. I'm out. He dipped. We don't really know the current status on Nurk. We don't know if Nurk is, mean, is, is ready, I mean, if I mean, he's going to be ready. I don't mean to cut, I don't mean if you cut, I don't mean to cut you off, babe. But even, right, if, go ahead. even if you do know the status and be like, Nurk going to be healthy, to start the season. That don't mean he's going to necessarily long? finish the season. Because exactly. let's be honest. Damn near every season Nurkic had, that was his problem in Denver. That's why they yep. chose Jokic over Nurkic. Because jo Jokic was at least on the court. And yep. Nurkic was a monster. But he could yep, never, ever stay healthy. People thought it was his weight. He lost weight. And he still... I mean, it was just a terrible injury this past year. And Nurkic had his best season as a pro. But, yeah. it, it, yo, you got to... It's, it's a legitimate question about these injuries. It's a legitimate question. Yeah, for sure. And I'm telling you, man, it is. it was triumphant news to a Miami Heat fan to hear that Hassan Whiteside and that damn contract was gone. Now, Hassan Whiteside's on an expiring, too. If y'all remember mm. just last episode, we talked about the fact that Whiteside opted in. He had a player yeah. option for this year. Of course, he was going to opt in to get that 20-something million. Goran is getting 20-something million this year, if I'm not mistaken. And Miami really need to get from underneath both of them. You had mm -hmm. Hassan at the five. You got Bam Adebayo, who basically can do everything that Hassan can do with a better jumper from outside on a smaller contract. So I've been screaming, get Hassan out. And look, man, Goran Dragic, good player, but he's getting older. He's making a lot of money. And Miami just discovered that Justice Winslow can't play anywhere but on ball. So now you mm -hmm. got an issue. That's exactly why they moved Tyler Johnson, other than the fact that Tyler Johnson was making too much. Everybody played on ball. So they said that they made the decision that uh, Justice Winslow is the point guard of the future, and the Portland deal was the last piece necessary to make the trade. Now Miami got Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler says that he looked at the way that Dwight uh, – not Dwight, I'm sorry, the Dwayne Wade retirement season was going, and he saw all the stuff that Miami did for Dwayne Wade and said, yo, that's the type of franchise I want to play for. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But pay a side note, I was at work, right, trying to do my job, you know, mm -hmm. and I overheard from a couple of cubicles over, somebody said, you know, that's the thing about the NBA, man, I'm sick of it. It's like, these guys, man, they just want to go to major market cities, and, and, and bad markets, you know, never they, they never get better. So you take a guy like Jimmy Butler, who was on the 76ers, they was this close to beating Toronto, and they got everything they need, and he left to go to Miami, who's a bad team, just because it's a nice city. And I politely rolled my chair out into that hallway, and I said, man, we as fans got to be careful. When everybody go team up with the All-Stars, we bitch about that. 
When a guy leave a team to go to a team that didn't even make the playoffs, we going to bitch about that because it's sunny there? I mean, goddamn. Should, should the players just call the fans and get y'all to tell them where they should spend their life? I mean, I feel like we tripping a little bit. And and I really, as a Heat fan, I feel some kind of way, bro, because it ain't like people beating the damn door down to come to Miami. So this notion that Miami keeps getting everybody because it's a pretty place to live, that shit sounds crazy to me. Miami mm. ain't just raking them in like that. Jimmy Butler's getting a little bit older. If I'm not mistaken, I think he's 31. I don't know if that's true, but I, I think he's in his low 30s. I'm going to tell you what happened when, what I think happens when players get in their 30s. They start thinking about life after basketball, where I want to settle mm. down at, where I want, where I want to plant my seeds and, and, and put my family at. You're going to look at where the I want to make the most money live. at. Where I want exactly, to make the most money bro. at. You want to start yeah. looking at areas where it, it, maybe it ain't no state tax. Like Word. Texas, like Florida. Then you want to start looking at areas where, hey, a franchise where maybe they can create a job opportunity for me after my career. Maybe a franchise that'll let me hang on a little bit longer when I know I'm washed. You done as Haslam. I, and don't get me wrong, dog. I love UD. Mm -hmm. But UD still getting paid from Miami. You don't think that looked good to other players? Like, damn, I would love to be able to grow old with a franchise that's going to let me keep getting a check. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think it got nothing to do with where the sun shine in Miami. It got everything to do with that state tax thing and everything to do with the way Miami treats their players later in their career. And then I saw Miami put a statement out that the Miami Heat have found the successor to D-Wade in Jimmy Butler. And yeah, man, that it feels good. It feels good to me, bro. I'm hyped that we got Jimmy. I'm hyped, let's, especially let's with Whiteside out there. Let's play, let's play Rumorville because it was also a rumor. Yeah, that Miami was out there on the phone with with the D.C. area, Washington yep. Wizards, saying, yo, what's up with Bradley Bell? And then it came back. I don't know if it's true. It's all a rumor. Let me, because you know, the way people's sauces has been going around lately, it's been, it's been catastrophic. So let me say I read, it's a rumor, uh, that the Wizards may have told Miami, like, yo, we'll give you Bradley Bell, but you got to take John Wall with him. Spade, do you think it's any validity to that, and would you want? Do. do you would you want a Wall, Bill, Jimmy Butler tandem down there? I do think it's some validity to that because I okay. think you now we haven't gotten to OKC yet, but I think OKC and Washington are both in a very unique place, man. You in a place where as a franchise you got to decide. You know what? It might be time to stick a dynamite to this shit and start all over. And if that's mm. the case, if if you if you are Washington and you're gonna entertain somebody taking Bill, what is Wall gonna do coming back off injury, getting older with that big ass contract by himself? That team ain't yeah. gonna be good enough to get anywhere and not bad enough to get lottery picks. So if I'm gonna entertain you getting Bradley Bill, get all this shit, take everything <laughs> up off of here. Let us go ahead and be completely terrible, free up a bunch of cap space. And let us go ahead and rebuild for the future. So, yeah, I think it's validity to that. As a Heat fan, do I want Wall and Bill? I don't. Okay. I don't. And and that's just because, and, and that's not a knock on John Wall. You know, man, I put Wall in my top fives, man. I'm a Wall fan. Mm -hmm. But at this point, Wall came into camp a tad bit chunky last season if we're keeping it a stack. So, came in a little bit slower than we expected to see him play. Could be because of previous injuries, but he had another injury this year. Mm -hmm. And and he cost a lot, bro. And again, yep. you go back into the same issue with what are we going to do with Winslow? I mean, we can move Winslow, but right now for the money, Winslow's cheaper. It's cheaper right. than all. So from a business standpoint, hey, I got interest in Bradley Bill. If I, it, it, look, if the burger got to come with the fries, I'm good. I, I'm good on that. I'm good. I see what the young kid hero got going. Okay. Spade. Yes, sir. Sound like you loving what Miami doing. I mean, we got to wait and see it. about the Bradley Bill Wall situation. See if it how that pan out. But I mean, so I mean you look at it, we're gonna talk about summer league later, but y'all you, you spoke on here, bro. He been looking good in summer league. So look like Miami yeah, is heading in the right direction. Look like they back. Yeah. Spade, I'm, yeah. I don't know. I guess we got I guess we could go to Philly next. Let's go to Philly next. Cause Philly sound Philly signed. Al Horford and Tobias Harris. You know, we kind of figured if they missed out on Jimmy Butler, they'd keep Tobias Harris and vice versa. We, 
I don't think neither one of us thought they'd keep they'd keep both. I don't think we did. But Mm-mm. once when they missed out on Jimmy, when they didn't get Jimmy, they traded him to Miami. They brought back Josh Richardson. They they kept Tobias Harris and they signed Al Horford Spade. And I gotta say, it was a head scratcher to me because I was I was like, why Al Horford Spade? Maybe you could shine some light on it. Let your boy know why, why, why. The the only logical explanation I can come up with with why Philadelphia makes a deal, makes a move to get Al Horford, it's the same reason that they made a move for Kylo Quinn. I think they're looking at this team and they're realizing that they got to do some serious load management with Joel Embiid. Hmm. And you don't want to have a situation where Embiid come off the court that you got absolutely nothing down there. People keep saying, yo, they're going to play Horford at the four. And I'm like, okay, I, I'm cool with that. But you still got LaParis. You know how hmm. I feel about Ben Simmons. And t- I don't oh, get Let me cut you off. Let me get a 20. Because they, they, they just signed Ben Simmons. I forgot to mention. Oh, they yeah. They gave Ben Simmons an extension. Let me mention that, too. But go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Bro, I don't care what they put around Ben Simmons. Until Ben Simmons get that jumper. And I ain't, it mm. ain't even got to be from three, fam. It ain't got mm. to be from three. He has got to get to the point where he is keeping defenses honest and pulling at least that mid-range jumper Otherwise, it ain't going to matter who the hell they put around them, bro. It's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough. Especially if you if you feel like the answer is to keep adding bigs. Kylo Quinn and 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 um, Al Horford. And I know they got Mike Scott. They, they mm-hmm. signed Mike Scott back. Uh, they lost TJ McConnell. They lost Reddit. I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know. So I'm looking at the team. I'm going to keep it a stack. That's a team, to me, that without a doubt took a step backwards. Philadelphia Man, I is was worse. Just man. about to say, I they are worse. And I, and I know 76 Sixers fans is going to be in this comment section. Spade, I think they got worse. I think they got, they got worse. worse. I, I, when this, when they picked up Al Horford, and, and listen, I know what somebody's going to be like. Well, Al Horford can hit threes. I know. So can Joel Embiid. But during yeah. the playoffs last year, they told Joel Embiid, stop pulling all them damn threes. Get your ass on the block. That's what they told him. That's why at the during that last little, the last couple of games the Sixers had in the playoffs, you see Joel Embiid at the three, and sometimes he took them, but not at the clip he took them before. He'd do this little pump fake and try and drive to the basket because they told him, stop pulling that hot, that, that many threes. Now, I know Al Horford can hit the three as well. Spade, they, they not just out there wetting up that they just out there all game. Like, eventually, Al Horford, when Al Horford, when they playoff Al was killing he, he was facilitating. He was making mm-hmm. making crisp passes. He was g- grabbing offensive and defensive rebounds. He was in the post, and he and occasionally he'll drop threes. He'll drop like a few threes. Spade, yeah. the, the paint is too damn clogged, and it's because Ben Simmons can't. Ben Simmons is a power forward, and I mean not like a power forward now. He a old school power forward. Back when power forwards didn't pull jump shots, all they did was. Be in the post. Like, he that he that guy. So, I, I yeah. just think the, I think that they lost. They lost J.J. Redick, who was definitely one of their best shooters. Spade, I told you, we talked about it during the playoffs. I said, damn, Jimmy Butler looking like he the heart and soul of this team. The team totally he changed. Was. Jimmy, the team totally changed once they said, yo, put the ball in Jimmy's hands. Let him facilitate. Let him make decisions. And, bruh. People on Twitter and in the sports media was killing Ben Simmons like, yo, he's in the way. He's he just in the way. He was in the way. That's why I've been seeing games where Ben Simmons had like six points, eight points. And they was like, yo, look at Ben Simmons. He only got like eight points. Like, it was crazy. I, I, Spade, I think they took a step. I think they, I think they got, I think they got worse. And I love Al Horford. Playoff Al is a thing. Just like yeah. Game Six Clay is a thing. Playoff Al is a thing. I just, I don't, I just, I don't think this team got better. Now, I know Philadelphia fans going to come in this comments and say X, Y, Z. I don't care. I don't feel like they got better. They lost one of their best, their best shooters. Uh, Spade, so you Damn, figure, bro. talk to me about that lineup, though, real quick. Bro, they, they signed Josh Richardson. A... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was, was going to say, Ben Simmons, Josh yep. Richardson, Tobias yep. Harris, I guess Al Horford at the four, and Joel Embiid. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 
Spade, you not I know I know you you a uh, Heat fan and we love Josh Richardson. He a, he a defensive guy, but Spade is Josh Richardson spraying up from three like that? I mean, Josh kind of nice. <laughs> Hold up, Josh I mean, that Spade, dude. He nice, but he ain't he ain't shooting up from three like no damn JJ. Nah, but I mean, bro, Josh ain't. Don't put the question mark on Josh. What was the Go first ahead. name you said? What was the first name? Ben Simmons. Bingo. Put the question mark there, bro. Because it don't okay. matter how good Josh can shoot. Because he not he not going to be open. He not going to be open. But why Spade. why would you leave Fans Josh? Fans going to come in this comment section and they going to say, Spade, LaParis, Ben Simmons averaged 18, 19 points this season. That's what they going to tell us. And was an all-star. That's what they are going to tell us. Yeah. That's what they are going to tell us. Yeah, I'm going to agree. I'm going to say you're right. Yep. And then I'm going to ask them to tell me what happened to his production in the postseason. Okay. And they wouldn't have had no postseason if Jimmy Butler didn't say, I'm tired of playing this game. Give me the well, damn ball and let me do what I do. I'm going to tell you something else, Doc. They ahead. gave a 33-year-old undersized center a four-year deal. He's 33. Yeah. He's 33. Yeah, I want to say he got like ninety something million dollars, but then they said uh, like it can go to like one hundred two or either one twelve or something. What, what did he get? One hundred nine. But one hundred. It can go, it can go up to one hundred nine if they make like if they make it to the finals. I think it is. Like it got some playoff shit in it, like some incentives. Like if they make it to the finals, they, it go they ain't up making to it to no finals. B. They straight. Huh? Spade. I mean, listen. I I, I think they, I think they got worse. And, and, and worse not might might not be the right term. I think they're going to be worse than last year. Cause, because I, I still got them in the playoffs. I got them in the playoffs. But I, 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 I don't know. Philly, 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 talk to me, man. Philly fans, talk to me. Spade, you want to take it to Golden State? No, not yet. Nah, I want to stay in the go. East, bro. I want to go to I want to go to another team that everybody felt like was right there at the cusp of things in the East. Let's go to Milwaukee. Okay, cool. Let's go to Milwaukee. So I, I Milwaukee got, I got, broke I, off Chris Middleton. Yes, they did. 178 million. Oh, my God. Five years. Go ahead. And what I just hey. say about the Terry Rozier thing, when you're not in a desired place, sometimes you got to overpay. I'm going to be honest with you. That's overpaying for Chris Middleton. I like Definitely. Chris Middleton. That's overpaying. Bruh, that's overpaying, bro. That's overpaying. Then they lose Malcolm Brogdon. Who Word. was a huge part to their success, I felt like. They lose hey, Brock. Milwaukee fans said that Brogdon was hurt and that they went through the they went through the majority of the playoffs without Brogdon. They think they can do it without him. Okay. I hope they right. <laughs> now I tell you what they did do that I like. They signed the sniper in Wesley Matthews. Okay. Wes Matthews gonna come in and knock down some threes. And I felt like that was to me, when you look at that team, that was the jump. Like, I heard somebody say, uh, this might have been on, this was on Gilbert Arenas' podcast where he was talking yeah. about, if you look at Giannis' numbers from last year and this year, his I think his scoring didn't change at all, and I think he averaged like two more rebounds. So how does that how does that turn to like 13 to 15 more wins? I, I think they did a good job of sprinkling shooters around and – Hey, man, when the halfback dive would pull the defense in, the shooters was mm -hmm. out there. So having Wesley Matthews out there, that I like. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. I feel like bringing Robin Lopez over made no sense. They got him cheap. Two years, 10 mil, I got it. I don't feel like it made no sense, bro. You, I mean, you agree? Let me say I understand why. I mean... I, I understand don't. why. Help me understand. Why? Cause, all right, so they got they got Brooke Lopez. We know Brooke Lopez is going to stretch the floor. I feel like they yeah. got Robin Lopez because Robin Lopez is going to be a, a defensive guy, a dude that can come in, give you, what, 18 minutes, going to grab some rebounds, play some tough defense. And, I mean, you got him for $5 million a year. Like, you, come on. That's not a lot of money. And, and he's going to he gonna give you however many minutes he play, he's going to give you solid minutes. I'm going to be honest, Spade. I watched my Bulls, and, I mean, Robin Lopez was one of the bright spots for the Bulls, and he wasn't even starting anymore. But Robin Lopez well, had, like, some 2020 games last year for the Bulls. 
So now Shit was pretty a, dark in Chicago, so it's kind of easy to be a bright spot in a room of darkness. <laughs> first of all, first of all, we had a lot of injuries. We're not about to make this about Chicago. I'm just talking about Rolo. Rolo is going to give you solid, tough minutes. You got them cheap. I, I don't mind this, babe. I don't mind it. I don't they mind lost it. somebody else, LaPaz. Go ahead, George Hill. No, they resigned George Hill. But they lost Miritic. Oh, who decided? Nico, oh, yeah. Oh, Nico I go get that bag at home. Got the business. Oh, yeah. Nico got the hell on. Yeah, he Nico did. got the hell on, bro. He he said, you know what? Kimba had crossed that man over and made him like fall all over the floor. He said, man, they ain't crossing like that over there. I I ain't getting embarrassed. I ain't getting punched in the face by teammates. I ain't getting dropped by crossovers. I could just go get this bag. Somebody told me they got a shorter season. I don't know if that's true. Somebody told me they got a shorter season over there. Make all the sense in the world. He's going to be treated like a god. Do we feel like Milwaukee got better, got worse, or stayed the same? That's what we should have been doing for all these teams. Bruh. Bruh. I think they stayed the same. I don't think they got worse. And I don't think they got better. Spade, I don't know if you can lose. Wow. I don't. Listen. They can say what they want about Brogdon. Brogdon was a, a I love big Brogdon. time factor, man. Uh, he was I a agree. factor. I, I just think I the agree. way they was just downplaying, like, ah, oh, Brogdon wasn't there. Man, Brogdon, hey, when, when Brogdon spade, when Brogdon got back in the playoffs, he was hooping. Like, he was playing better than – him and George Hill was playing, than, playing better than Bledsoe. So, I, I, I want I, – I'm, I'm going to say they be the same spade, but six, I don't know if they get 60 wins again, bro. You think they get 60? Oh, well, I think that, I, I hate to say this, it's going to sound jacked up. I felt like that was fluky anyway. Like, I don't know. I So, what are we, we saying the same as within what? Three to five wins? I, I, Maybe. Yeah, they'll be in the 50s. I think I got them in the 50s. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I got them there. I got them there. Okay. I hate to do this. Let's go back. Boston. Better, or worse, or the same? Um, I, I want to say, I want to say Boston stays the same. I say Boston stays the same. Hot take, bro. They lost House Al, Al Horford. They lost Kyrie. I want to say they stay the same, though. You know what? Hot take. I think they get better. Okay. Okay. Because I think Kemba's so used to playing with bums and scrubs, man. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Kemba gonna there. be like, holy shit. Like, Word. this is amazing. Word. Uh, who else did we talk about? Uh, we ain't got to do Miami. Miami clearly got better. Uh, Philadelphia. Better, worse, or the same? I think, I, I think they took a step back. I think they Definitely took a step worse. back. Definitely worse. I like how you nice and you still saying like you think when you know. I, I, I do. I, it's bad. I, I got a lot of res- I mean, I probably got more respect for Al Horford than you do. I just think, Al, I think what Al Horford bring... I, I think we will see it later in the season, not early. And I, what I just, what role is he? He like the fourth option, fifth option. I, I don't think you have to. I think Al Horford is one of those players you don't have to run run like plays for him. Like you'll just look and be like, oh shit, Al Horford open at the top of the key. He bang that shit, or he open at the free throw line. He can knock that down. But the problem, is, the reason I think they got worse, because when Al Horford standing at the free throw line, Ben Simmons gonna be right there in the paint. And oh, um, and B gonna be right there on the other side of the paint. That's the problem. Him. Yeah, they gonna be right there. Him. It's gonna be like a. It's gonna be like they running the triangle, but the shit is like wild close. It ain't like the triangle by the elbow and the three point line. It's it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna they're gonna be, crazy. be running the line. <laughs> Word. It's gonna they're gonna be running suicides from the free throw line to the to the to the uh, baseline. Like it's gonna be. I don't know. I think they. I think they got worse. I do. I think. Spade, you know what we didn't talk about? We, I want to talk about uh, Indiana real quick. We don't want to spend a lot of time on it. We know we talked about Milwaukee. They got Brogdon. I mean, Milwaukee lost Brogdon. He went to Indiana. They got Jeremy Lamb. They signed TJ McConnell. And they mm-hmm. signed, like, CJ Wilcox. So they made some acquisitions, Spade. After um, losing Bogdanovich. They lost Boggs, and we know uh, Collison retired. Yep. Collison retired. But, Which Spade, shocked I mean, me, you, too, to be honest with you. I, I mean... No, I mean, you know, sometimes they be like, you know what? Oh, they lost that young too. 
Yeah, they lost that. That went to the Bulls. That's correct. But yeah. Spay, uh, I mean, you look up, you look at their team. You figure Brogdon is the starting PG. We hoping Depot come back and be a hundred percent. I guess Jeremy Lamb plays the small forward. Sabonis so slides in to that spot, and they got Miles Turner. How do we feel about that team? Uh they just lost so many pieces, bro. That. I think they're going to take a step back. And I really? love Brogdon. Really? I do. I think they got a little better, bro. Let, look, let me let me give you the names of the people they lost, though. Go ahead. They lost Kyle O'Quinn. Say what you will yeah. about him, but that's that's about they lost. All right? Yeah. Uh, who else I got? They lost Corey Joseph. Mm-hmm. Uh, they lost Darren Collison. They lost yeah. Wes Matthews. They lost okay. Thad Young. They lost a lot. Let me, let me, let me. They lost. Okay, they, they lost Bogdanovich. Okay, and, cool. And it seemed like all they got back was Brogdon. Nah, Spain, let, me, let, me, let me break it down for you. I feel I'll like Brogdon. I feel like Brogdon and Collison. I feel like Brogdon going to be better than Collison. I do. I feel okay, like what you. I feel like what you got for Bogdanovich. You're going to get from Jeremy Lamb plus more. Jeremy Lamb. You said they got McConnell, got right? Did they get McConnell? Yeah, they got McConnell. I feel like whether it's Corey Joseph, whoever, whichever, Corey Joseph and McConnell to me cancel out. They cancel out. They both was backups. Corey Joseph was erratic. Sometimes he had a great game, but the next game he had, he gave you two points, shoot one of, one of 11. So I feel like McConnell and Joseph cancel out. Who else you said? Uh, they lost I feel like Jeremy young. Lamb and Bogdanovich. I feel like, I mean... They, and they got Jeremy Lamb way cheaper than what Bob Donovich got. They got Jeremy Lamb three years, thirty-one and a half million. That's cheap. Yeah, but wait, you ain't trying to say you ain't got Jeremy and Bob Donovich on the same damn level. I, I think Jeremy Lamb could give you what Bob Donovich gave you and more, Spade. And more. What? Yes. Bro, I went to a game. With Bob, people out and Bogdanovich had like twenty something in the first I half. Got, Spade, I got you. I know. I know what Bob is. He played for the Nets. I got him. I, I won fan do money when one day Bob played for the Nets. He dropped like 50, 50 some points. I, I got it. I got it. I think Jeremy Lane. You, can think, give you, you th- I think Jeremy Lane can give you what Bogdanovich gave you and more. Now I know Jeremy Lane got that sleepy kind of attitude, bro. But I feel like he's more athletic. I feel like he's a better defender. I feel like he can shoot. Maybe not as well, but just as good. Okay. I do. I do. Okay. So I, I, feel I, like hope, Indiana, I hope you're right. Because I, I like the like Pacers. In, yeah, I feel like Indiana's going to be all right, man. I think they're going to be all right. When you say okay. you feel like they got worse, what do you, worse how? How many? But I just feel like 10? they lost so many pieces. Because one of the things, again, that was the strength to that team last year, Miles Turner was phenomenal. He don't get yeah. enough credit for the season that he just had. Okay. Depot was really good, but when Depot went down, you know why the team didn't fall completely off? Because they got great play from Bogdanovich and LaParis. You called this on the podcast. They got yeah. great play from Tyreek. Tyreek gone. Yeah. Bogdanovich gone. That young gone. So all the people that stepped up that made that shit still a team to respect, they all gone. They all gone. Spade, when you say words, what you saying? Minus 10 wins? How many wins? Minus. Mine is more than five. What they what they have? Forty something, forty five ish. I don't know. I don't have it in front of me, but if, man, yeah, if, if they won forty five last year, I got them winning thirty eight this year. Shit, that might have them out the play. What you said? Did he did he in the um thirty nine? You yeah, you are right. They might be out of there. Them shit. Wow. Are we expecting wow. Depot ready to go at the start of the season? I mean, we we I hope. I, I would assume so. I don't even remember. What was his injury, bro? It was bad, He tore, right? he tore ACL. Uh, you got him ready to go at the start of the season? I don't know, cuz. <laughs> I think you can get, Spade, I think you can get back from an ACL in six months, bro. That's the, the the league don't start the October. He did that shit damn near before the All-Star break, which was what, February? Before that? Ain't, ain't that Depot game, explosiveness? That's his game. I just swear, he was out there kind of pulling little minis and, in threes. I don't know, bro. Man, every highlight I saw with him running to the basket. Okay. Uh, it was pretty full back divish. But I, <laughs> we'll see. Hey Spade. While we while we yep. still in while we still in the East. While we still in the East. We you know we gotta go to New York. You know we gotta go to New York. 
The Knicks. In New York. Yeah. Go ahead, you remember bro. they was like, yo, we Patrick taking for Zion. Zion. Yeah. Sing that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, hey, wish, yo, I, wish the, I, I wish Stacks was around for this one. Hey, Spade. They Good said, yo, we getting, we tanking for Zion. We getting Zion. Yo, at the yeah, end man. of the season, Spade, they said, yo, the Knicks started winning some games. They was like, yo, we so far back there that we can win some games and we still got a good chance to land Zion. Yeah. They didn't get Zion in the draft. They, they didn't get, get the Zion. Lottery. They didn't no. get the lottery. No. And it was like, I saw a good. We'll get RJ Barrett pairing with Kyrie. We'll get KD. We're going to be yep. Gucci. Yep. They didn't get neither, Spade. They, they, didn't they, they didn't do it. But they did get Julius Randle, who we love. I think we love him. Your bucket. Uh, they got Wayne Ellington, Alfred Payton, Todd Gibson, Bobby Portis, and Reggie Bullock. Spain, let me ask you this real quick. Because, see, me and Stax was going back and forth on Twitter. And it's crazy. It started with football, and then Stax, Stax took it to, to basketball. But, Spain, I got to ask you, why do the New York Knicks love getting former Bulls? They always get former Bulls. Let's go back. They took that. They got that. First of all, we've been, we've been, they've been taking former Bulls since Eddie Curry because they, they, they took Eddie Curry from us way back when. But they had Eddie Curry. They, they took uh, uh, Derrick Rose, Noah. Now they got Bobby Portis. Now they got Taj Gibson. And if I'm not mistaken, I think they had Tyrus Thomas at one time, Jamal Crawford. Like, what is with them getting all, all – must, must the Bulls be like, yo – the Knicks be like, yo, we'll get them. What is with the Knicks taking them? They the New York Bulls or the Chicago Knicks? Which one? I don't know, but I'm concerned because that don't sound like the recipe for success to me. I mean, they, they, they did sign all these guys to two, three-year deal space. So I guess they figuring in two years, we'll go at it again. That's when Giannis' contract is up. They think that maybe they got a chance to get the Greek. But, man. That's why they signed all these guys to two-year deals. Babe, but let's just talk about New York, the Knicks. Like, the, if, I'm, I know you're not a Knicks fan, but should Knicks fans be upset? Or should they just be like, yo, I mean, we, this is the New York Knicks. This is what happens with us. We've seen Michael Rappaport has some choice words for the owner, but... Spade, the no, Knicks. they got they got a right to be pissed. LeBarrus, they should be pissed. Okay, look, I'm not mad. Not not getting Zion in the draft. That's out of your hands. But bro, if it was rumors that KD wanted to come to New York, you go uh-huh. all out. Mm-hmm. Word on the streets is Dolan now offer that man a max contract. Mm. I'm not saying that's the reason why he wasn't going. I also heard somebody say that. KD never sat with New York anyway, so he don't even know that they weren't going to offer him no max day. I don't know if that's true. And you know, mm-hmm. at this time of the year, that's what's so dangerous, man. So many different people are reporting so many different right. things with sources. Don't nobody... The fact that you can just say sources and people take that shit for fact, I ain't even got to say a name. Imagine if you could do that shit anywhere else in the world. That's a fact. But the fact that Dolan said he didn't... They was not going to offer Kevin Durant a max. They wasn't trying, bro. That's my problem. If I'm a, if I'm a Nick fan and they come out and Dolan like, look, we threw the kitchen sink at this dude and he just said no. Like, it, it was nothing else we could do. We got aggressive. We tried to make deals. We did everything in our power. We asked him who did he want us to try to go after because I'm mm. sure that's what – I don't want to jump ahead, but that's what the Clippers did. Right. If, if, if you do all that and you strike out as a fan, you can't do nothing but say, damn, man, like we tried. But if I'm a fan of the Knicks and it come out like, hey, we wasn't going to offer Kevin Durant the max, then you wouldn't even try him, fam. Now I got a problem. Now I'm pissed off. Now I'm pissed off. We lost Chris Stapps because he wasn't happy here. Say what yeah. you will. Say what you will about Melo. And I'm going to tell you something else I got a problem with. Knicks fans, don't they be hard on Melo like he ain't the best thing they done had. Melo the best shit y'all done had, fam. I, in my life, let me say that because somebody gonna go back to Walt Frazier. I ain't see all that from the Pat Ewan era of John Starks and all that to now. Look, man, Mello the best shit y'all done had, and I hate to hear Knicks fans slander Mello. I really got a problem with that because y'all mm. was loving it when he was up there putting up fifty in the garden. Y'all was cheering your asses <laughs> off. They was happy then, dog. Word. But, yeah, man, if I'm a Knicks fan, I'm pissed off. You, you got to go in aggressive, man. If it, if you really want it, LaPaz, come on, bro. You know I'm right. You got to go in. Bro, I'm not just a – hey, bro, 
I'm you a little too calm for me. I don't like calm. No, 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 that shit makes me feel I'm like we ain't on the same page. No, I, I'm listening. I'm, but I'm with you, Spade. It, it, listen, it should be, it should be a mob outside the guard. But you, you want to know why the they should be outside the house. owner. You want to know why the owner feel like he can do this? Because the garden still sell out. The celebrities still be there. Like, they don't feel it until it really start affecting them pockets. Like, the spade. It's cr- we're going we're gonna to get to the West and we're going to talk about the Clippers in a minute. But it's just crazy when you see where the Clippers were. I, when we were... Bruh, you remember the Clippers. The yeah. owner of Candy Clippers. You remember them yeah. Clippers. They you remember where the stock, Clippers basically. were to where they are now? It's like... And, 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 you know, I'm tired of people, listen, people like, yo, New York, the Knicks, it's the Mecca, everybody want to go to the Garden. Yeah, they want to go to the Garden and beat the Jakes off the Knicks. It don't look like nobody want to come to the Knicks. And if, that may be the owner's, that may be the owner's fault. Maybe they don't want to play for Dolan. But all this New York is the Mecca, and it, it's just, it's sad, Spade, because as long as I can remember, the Knicks always was at least... Spade, I grew up. I grew up when the Miami Heat and the Knicks used to literally have fist fights Fight. on the yeah. court. Like, we, we yo, it'd be a Sunday ass. afternoon. It'd be a Sunday afternoon, and it was Knicks and Heat. You'd be like, "Oh shit, let me get the food." This shit is about to be an all-out brawl. Like, this shit is about to go down. And, and the Knicks are far removed from that. Now, I do, Spade. I'm, I, I like what the Knicks. Um, let me not say I like what the Knicks did. I understand what the Knicks did, and I think the Knicks will have a much better product on the court. I love Julius Randle. He a twenty ten guy. Maybe you know he a twenty ten guy. I think Alfred Payton is the type of point guard they do they do need. I don't know where that leaves DSJ. We know they got rid of Moutier. I don't know where that leaves uh, Dennis Smith Jr. They got some shooters. They got Wayne Ellington. They got Reggie Bullock. I, I, I already know what I'm getting from Taj. He a glue guy. He's going he to rebound. He's going to play tough defense. He can get you 10 points. Same with Bobby Porter. another tough glue guy. Going to just do everything. He can knock down the three. He can hit the midi. I'm not mad at what the Knicks did, Spade. But, I mean, when you were selling everybody, KD, Kyrie, Zion, the lottery fall had a lottery fall, whether you think it's rigged, whatever. But you selling people Kyrie and... <laughs> and Kevin Durant, and you end up with Todd Gibson and Bobby. Like, come on, man! You cannot be happy as a Nick fan, man. You can't be happy can't. as a Nick fan. You, you can't. can't. Now I agree with you. They salvaged it. Like they they putting a better product on the court yeah, this year than this they is had a much last year. Product. Yeah, I agree. A much better product. It's just when you promise, when you promise the moon and come back with one star, everybody Spade. disappointed. And Spade, the way they signing these two year people to these two year this, it looked like they going. Do the same thing again. Uh, they now it's oh we well we we gonna try and set it up for Giannis. We're gonna set it up for Giannis. And maybe they maybe they land a big time free agent, but it don't look like anybody wants to go to New York. At least the Knicks. Man, you know, they wanna go to New York. They wanna go to Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> they don't they don't wanna go to New New York, New York. Like Manhattan. They don't wanna go to Manhattan. I don't know, man. I I and I get it. Space, so you figuring, I mean, let's just play with their little lineup. I guess Peyton or DSJ starting at the point. Uh, Barrett at the two. I mean, Knox at the three. Figuring yep. Julius Randle at the five. And maybe. I'm thinking at the four. And Mitchell so who Robinson. at the five? Oh, Mitchell Robinson Mitch- at the five. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm figuring they'll go Julius Randle at the five and maybe Portis or Taj at the four. I don't know, man. I don't know. So the. Somebody was asking me if I thought they would be crazy enough to try Portis at the three. Now, look, Bobby got a little jumper, and uh, Julius Randle got a little jumper. But I don't like either one of those guys at the three. I don't. Me neither. Me neither. Um, and I mean, I mean, Knox is right there. And, like, come on. You ain't about to stunt yeah, Knox's Knox growth. growth. You ain't about to stunt Knox's And, and you, you gave Randle that bag. So, Randle got to Randall gotta start. Oh, no. Nah, Randle's in the starting. Whether it be the four or the five, he's starting. Yeah, he's yeah, he starting. got to. But sort of, I, I feel like the product is better, but when you sell yeah, so Nick's Kyrie, got that. When you when you selling people Kyrie and KD and Zion all year, mm-mm, this is this is not acceptable. So they do the, now, do the, can the Knicks make a playoff run with this roster? You know what? 
I think so. Really? I think so. I think so. Hmm. You don't sound like you with me on that. Nah, I'm not with you, Spade. I'm not with you. What do you think I mean, is going to hurt him? What area? I mean, that, that area I, I, of concern to me is the backcourt, right? Yeah, PSG definitely. and Barrett, if they the one and yeah. two. Uh, I, I feel like Barrett is so sporadic. He's so sporadic, bro. When when they're going in, they're going in. When they're not, woo. But I low-key feel like if they run that O through Julius Randle and play, I know this 2019, 2020, people ain't really doing that inside-out shit no more, but everybody ain't got to copy. You know, you can do your own thing. If they run that offense through Julius Randle, man, I, I think it makes – I think you can get some easy looks for Barrett and some of these other guys. If you're going to come down and let Barrett try to play like he James Harden and just run, I was, and I'm, that, then no. That's my concern right there. You drafted then a guy no. this high speed. We just seen how Dallas just did with Luka. We seen how Trey Young got the keys. Yep. I, you, 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 I, my concern is they be like, you know what? We, draft, we drafted Knox. We drafted Barrett. The, these guys got drafted high. I feel like the Knicks might hand. Barrett the keys, bro. They was literally what well, they do. Like, no, they was literally calling this guy. They was the comparison was James Harden last night in a summer league game before the game started. Before it started, I finna say that's disrespectful. <laughs> it was before it started, but I mean, I'm gonna make James slap the shit out somebody. Nick fans, leave your thoughts in the comment section. I just wanted to touch base on the Knicks. Spade, where do you want to go next? Oh wow, where do we go next? I guess. I mean, I we can go to the go West. We ain't got to give. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's go to the West. Let's go to Golden State first, then. Let's go to Golden State. Golden ah. State retain. They got Clay. They kept Clay. Gave Clay one hundred and ninety million, which could play. Me and you had a conversation off camera, and we both said that we feel Clay needs to be patient and take the whole year off. You said you yep. think Clay going to rush back, right? I think I, I expect Clay back after uh, after All Star break, like probably yeah. right after. I think Clay need to. I think Clay need to take the year. I, I think I expect Clay back sooner than Depot, and and I don't mean this season. I'm talking about that timeline because of the difference in the way they play. Like Clay don't really need a lot of explosion in his game, man. Okay. Clay don't even I really dribble. He, he'll catch a shoot guy. What Depot so, do, you know, for his play style, I think Depot needs longer. I think. Okay. All right. So we know they they brought back Looney. They got Looney for three years, fifteen million. Yeah. They signed yeah. Willie Colley Stein, which was Wow. Yeah. And then wow. they also traded for D'Angelo Russell. They four wow. years, $117 million in in the signing wow. trade deal with the Nets. And a report came out about that that eventually D'Angelo Russell will be on the block and they will trade him away from the Warriors. So Spade, share some light on this shit. Wow. Yeah. This is this is what you were talking about when we were talking yeah. about Charlotte. Yeah. This is saying, hey, plan A fell through. But we're right. not just going to sit here with our thumbs in our asses. We're going to go out right. here and try to make something shake. Word. And boy. Yeah. Bro, Willie Colley Stein just came out of nowhere and said he wanted out of Sacramento. That kind of caught me off guard already. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, shit, Willie Colley Stein won out. And it seemed like right after that, it was like Golden State signs Willie Colley Stein. So that had me like tampering. You know what I'm saying? Did somebody mm. from go? Did Draymond go sit in the car and call Willie Colley Stein? Mm. Like that happened so that was weird to me because they had just read up Looney. People were afraid they weren't even gonna be able to get Looney because they thought Looney value was up. They but, got Looney, they come back and get Willie Colley Stein, and then they they realized that Brooklyn had already said, "Look, man, if we get Kyrie, we moving D'Lo." Mm. And go to state say, "Okay, we're gonna sit here, we're gonna wait." Boom, they said they got Kyrie. They said they got Durant. All right, cool. Now we got money, say, you know, we got money off the books because KD not staying. Mm -hmm. And they got to do something with D'Lo. We'll do a sign and trade for D'Lo. Man, I just take my hat off to those. You know what's sad about this, man? Golden State Wait. made a move like that in what was supposed to be a down and out year for Golden State. And for what? They done lost all their damn fans. All their hmm. fans is gone. They done lost huh. all they fans, bro. They fans are now Lakers Clippers. and Clippers fans. Word. That's a fact. That's a fact. Everybody done jumped off their bandwagon. But I think that's a hell of a move. 
That's I, I just I like it. you know we we are not Golden State fans on it. We don't we we would you know we don't want Golden State to be successful. You know, but golly, this is what I'm talking about with Charlotte. Somebody get on the block and you be like, yo, that dude can make our team better. Hey, Spay, I had a conversation. And not, I was tweeting somebody when it was a it was around when Julius Randle had bounced from the Lakers, and I was like, "Yo, mm-hmm. I love Julius Randle. I love Julius Randle." I was like, "Yo, I love for the Bulls to get a guy to get Julius Randle," and they was like, "Yo, you got Bobby Portis." And I'm like, "Look, man, uh, Julius Randle is such a talent. When you get a guy like Julius Randle, you get him figure and you out. figure that shit out. Like yep. talent overweighs all that other, you know." Usually in the NFL, and I'm I'm taking it to the NFL space. You'll get my point when I get there. I'm taking it to the NFL because you be like, oh, you look at a team like a. I'm just throwing a team out there. You look at a team like the Patriots or something, and you be like, oh, they got wide receivers, they got a quarterback, they got a running back. Like they don't need anything. Why would they take this guy? And you be like, yo, you at this point, you just gotta take best available. So, so when the Warriors looking around like. Man, KD going like, yo, we ain't about to just be sitting here and be like, nah, who out there? Who can we go get? It's some rumors out there that D-Lo on the block. Let's make a call. And people was like, yo, I don't think it's going to work. What's going to happen when Clay get out? Listen, man, we worry about that shit when it happens. When Clay get back, then we'll worry about that shit. But for now, we got Steph, we got D-Lo, we got Draymond, and we're going to figure this shit out. And I, I got I to gotta take my hat off to them guys, Spade, because... That's what I want teams to do. Whether it be Charlotte, all the teams that they be like, man, let me ask you this. You talked about smaller market. You said somebody at your job talked about smaller market teams. Yep. Um, you know, about you know the smaller market teams. Spade, do what do we consider Golden State a, a major market? And I don't I'm, know. I'm, not now. Not now. As before, when we looked at Golden State, when you look at Golden State, like, oh shit, that shit LA. Oh shit, that's New York. Oh, that's my name. There's one LA. It, right. It, so exactly. I, I, I would still consider Golden State up. And I know right now they super Golden State and they got a big bill two billion dollar state arena coming going up and they won championships. So now people don't look at Golden State as no small market. But Golden State was a small market team. It was They a, still are, bro. I, they I, still man, are in my opinion. I know that. But I'm just saying, people want to say it's not a small market because they don't want some. They draw on free agents, yada yada yada, blah blah blah. But to me, it's still a small market team. Yep. So you know saying what? Like, oh, saying like, oh, you can't build in a small market. That's nonsense. You look at Milwaukee. Look at Milwaukee. So you can build in a small market team, man. You just gotta do yeah, it. Man. You gotta do it a certain way. And I, I, I gotta take my hat off to Golden State, but busting that move to get to get D'Lo, man. I mean, they traded Bro. Iguodala. They traded Iguodala. Uh, Iggy out of there. Was it's funny that they traded Iguodala after uh, that little interview came out. I felt like that had a little something to do with it. But they got Iguodala out of there. I mean, they lost Quinn Cook. But I feel I feel like Golden State going to be right in the mix. <laughs> they're going to be right in the mix. Maybe not going back to the finals. But they're going to be right in the mix again, in my opinion. Do you feel like they're still in the mix? I agree 100%. And I want to yeah. go back to something you said when you was talking about the market. Mm-hmm. When the league was dominated by Cleveland and Oakland, nobody right. was crying that big market shit. When those were the mm-hmm. two teams in the finals every damn year. And now That's that right. Golden State is about to move out of Oakland and move to San Francisco, mm-hmm. nobody's... Look, you in California, so you're still getting beat down with Cali taxes, and then you don't even get the glitz and glamour of L.A. So let's not, you know, you can miss me with that. Only the big markets are, no, no, that's not it. But I agree, man. They did exactly what we say teams should do. That's why, you know, I want to go back. I said as a Knicks fan, I'd be pissed. I'll be pissed, like you said, because we came into this offseason with the expectation of Kyrie and Kevin Durant. Like, man, people have been attaching Kevin Durant name to the Knicks for about, Three, four seasons now. So, Word. damn, they had me convinced it was going to happen. They had me convinced that some – man, I was ready to say the draft lotto was fixed. I just knew the Knicks was getting Zion. But me other too. than that, I like I like what they did. I don't understand the Taj Gibson pickup. I really don't. I'm not going to front. But you look at Portis and you look at Randall and you say, man, I don't know how they're going to do this. Man, you figure it out. So, jumping ahead to where we at now, you look at Golden State. And I told you, LaParis, in pre-production, I don't know – 
that I like a backcourt defensively of Steph and D'Lo. Because right. we know that that team likes to hide Steph on defense. You take Andre Iguodala off that team, who's one of your better defenders. Klay mm-hmm. Thompson's going to be hurt, who's mm-hmm. one of your better defenders. And then you bring in another guy who's not known for being a, like a, a lock, a defensive lock. To me, that backcourt going to get exposed nightly. But, man, I take my hat off to these guys for saying, you know what? Go get me some firepower when we'll figure this shit out. They said Steve Kerr's supposed to be this great coach. Uh, he this amazing coach. Show me something. Show me something. Yeah. Here's some pieces. And, and man, you got to love that from, from a team ownership or a management perspective. Look, man, we're not going to just sit around. We're going to bust a move. We're going to figure that shit out. I like it. And it's a shame, man, because all the Golden State Warrior fans is out. They out. <laughs> Hey yo, you ain't right because I hey, Spade, I don't the even thing know what y'all still trying Twitter. for. It's the thing going around on Twitter that's like, yo, state your team now before these seasons start. And I mean, people writing Clippers, and I'm like, wait a minute, people back being Clipper fans. I mean, Clippers had that little run when they was, you know, Blake and DeAndre was jumping out the gym, but I don't, I don't know, man. Spade, I wanna, I wanna take it to Utah next. You good with that? Let's do it. You know they you know they bust the trade and got uh Mike Mike Conley? Mike Conley. Yep. But they also made some other moves, baby. They like like we mentioned earlier, they, they got Bogdanovich. They got Emmanuel yep. Moody Emmanuel Moody, excuse me. Spade, you had a lot to say about Jeff Green today, uh not today, but this week on Twitter. And they also yep. got a dude that is a walking I don't know why this dude can't ever find a home either. But they got Ed Davis, who damn it can grab twelve rebounds in his sleep. He on the court for 12 minutes. He got 12 boards. So they ended up, they, now we know they lost Favors. I think they lost Tabo Strafalosa, however you say his name. Favors went yep. to the Pelicans, if I'm not mistaken. But, Spade, talk to me about Utah. I, I told you, I, th- I, I like what Utah been doing. They got, the, uh, finally got Donovan Mitchell some help. Finally. Yeah, man. So yeah. I, I, I like what Utah is doing, Spade. Talk to me about the Jazz. I try not to compliment Utah. <laughs> but damn, I like it. I like it. I had a debate with some guys, and I feel like I talk about my job way too much on this damn podcast. But I got in a debate with some guys at work, and I heard somebody say, "I don't, I don't understand why Utah got Jeff Green." I feel like they shouldn't have got Jeff Green, and they should have kept uh, Tripper. What's his name? Uh, Tripper from Duke. Oh, you talking about uh, the dude I? Uh... What's his name? Grayson you know who I'm Allen. talking about. Grayson Allen. Yeah. Should have kept Grayson Allen. So I kind of turn around and I'm like, what are, you know, what are you basing this on? Like, ah, uh, you know, Jeff Green's old and he can't really guard nobody. And I'm like, man, look, Grayson Allen can't guard nobody either. He ain't doing them and following people. I just think about that clip of him hooking Trey Young arm and falling all over his shoulder. And <laughs> if, if that's the defense you want, then yeah, you keep him. But I'm like, man, Jeff Green is a bucket, bro. You got him for the MLE. He's a savvy vet. He's been around. He's, he's, you know, he ain't finna lead your team anywhere. But as far as a guy you can plug in who get it, come on, Spade. He they was like, ah, oh, Jeff Green ain't it. Come bro, on, I pulled his numbers from last league. season. Yeah, man. Yes, he's bro. He's been in this league that just know how to <laughs> yes. play basketball. And you need yes. those. That's what's wrong. They think everybody got to be a superstar. That's not how you fill out a team. This is yeah, how you fill bro. out a team. Yeah. So I, I like it. I like what they doing. I hate to admit it. I'm not. I, I told don't you they like got Utah, better, bro. They got better. But they got better. They got better. They got better. You, fi- you figure that? I like. And like you said, you get these guys, and you figure out the lineup shit later. You figure it out. So you figure Mike Conley, point guard. We know Donovan Mitchell. Uh, I don't know if they're going to go by Donovan that small. Because I mean, I figure he's starting. They gave him like seventy three million dollars. By Donovan that small. Uh, what's his name? The the. Oh, what's the white boy then that be shooting threes? The lefty. Uh, Joe Ingles. Joe Ingles. You Joe Ingles at the four, I guess. And and go bear at the five. And however, if if maybe maybe you change it and put Ingles. They got Ed Davis starting right now. Right, oh, right okay. now they got Ed Davis yeah, starting maybe. at the four. And they got Ingles coming off the bench? Got Ingles coming off the bench. But they're I mean, going Ingles as a six man Mitchell, might be. Bogdanovich, Ed Yo. Davis, and Rudy Gobert. Ingles as a six like man it. might be dangerous, Spade. I'm telling you. I kind of like it. You looking at Utah, and I'm I'm thinking, and I said that I said that when we, we had just announced the Conley trade. I'm like, yo, 
I feel like it's be- I feel like it's way. Be- you know, you gotta pray everybody stay healthy, but that's with anything. Right. Everybody right. gotta stay healthy. But they stay healthy. I think they better. I think they are a lot better. And I'm I saying so a lot. Too. I think so too, because I'm telling you, man. I like Bogdanovich. I mean, I, I think he got overpaid, but people was acting like, ah, oh, who is this guy? I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Nah, nah, like, yo, hold up now. Game. Yeah, hold up. Where I else mean, we going, I, bro? I feel like that's how you fill out a team. Spade, let's take it to Sacramento. Your boy out there, De'Aaron Fox, he had a, just put together an amazing season, but they lost Willie Collie Stein. We, we was kind of hard on Harrison Barnes opting out. But lo and behold, he got four years, $90 million, got some longevity, got some stability out there with Sacramento. So they got Harrison Barnes. They got they signed Dwayne Demon f- from Atlanta. They got Rashawn Holmes, a nice, solid backup big. They got Trevor Ariza, and they got Corey Joseph, along with everything else they already has paid. Can, can Sacramento finally make a playoff run to get in the playoffs? I mean, I don't know if they can, and it's not – from lack of trying it ain't because of them not having good pieces it's just the the west kind of shifting over there man and it is it is you know i'm gonna tell you it's two people on this team that i'm keeping my eye on and both of these guys i'm fans of and and this year is 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 put up time you know i got that thing i I give you a little time to figure it out it's you know Mm -hmm. game speed different it's more games it's more travel i'm gonna give you a little time then at some point, man, I, I got to put that pressure on you. And Harry Giles the third, and Marvin Bagley the thirds, the two thirds, <laughs> y'all gotta y'all gotta show up this year. Well, Willie Colley Stein out. Marvin Bagley's probably gonna get that start at the five. He got the he got to show, man. He got to show. Yeah, and Harry I, I Giles think, don't play much, but when he play, he looked nice to me. I, I think, he got I, game. Yeah, yeah. I think Harry Giles. I think he had a solid season, and I I, I think Sacramento gonna be all right now. Ne- I don't know if that means a playoff run, but I think they're going to be right there. If not in the playoffs, I think they're going to be like an eighth. I mean, ninth, tenth, right around there. And then you know what? Nine and ten in the West, that's probably 40 wins. Yeah, absolutely. They did one thing I don't like, LaPaz. What's that? Why? Yeah, and look, I'm just going to be honest. Somebody ain't going to like this, but this is my show, damn it. <laughs> Why get Harrison Barnes that money? When Kelly Oubre out there. Spade, you know, I, I don't know. Bruh. I don't you know understand that. K, you know I'm a KO fan, bruh. I, like, I love I don't Oubre. understand that, bro. I'm going to get Kelly over from these guys. Come on, man. And, and Spade, the homie, shout out to the homie, I'm Negro. He tweeted, he tweeted, he a Suns fan, y'all. He tweeted the Suns and Kelly Oubre. He added them and said, hey, <laughs> y'all, know, <laughs> y'all know free agency started, right? Y'all can sign, y'all can start signing, folks. But Kelly Kelly Oubre is just out there. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Kelly Oubre, but you know I'm an Oubre fan. Hey, hey bro, but, they got a reason, right? Don't they got a reason? Yes, yes. I was about to say, why Trevor? If Ariza? you like Harrison Barnes, keep Harrison Barnes and then go get Kelly L. You gotta get Oubre. I don't understand why he's still floating around out there. I don't. Spade, why? Why get Trevor Ariza? Why? I wish I damn knew. I've been asking that question they got for a while. The other now. Bogdanovich that's like a small yeah. forward. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah. got Harry Giles. Spade, I don't, I don't know how tall Marvin Bagley is, but I could be wrong. Ain't he like a power forward, he, small forward? I think he's about six ten, six eleven ish. I mean, I, I don't understand. Yeah, he listed at six eleven, two thirty five, bro. He can play that five. Hey, get your ass in that paint. And write raps. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Take that same I, anger you had in that last verse that you gave Dame Lillard. Take that shit to the block. Spade, where, where you got where you got Sacramento at? Like in, around forty wins. I got them. Yeah, I got them not changing much. And like I said, they they didn't get worse. I just don't necessarily feel like they got better. I, I got them about. Spade, before I got we get to, go ahead. Yeah, man, they ahead. won thirty nine games last season. I, I got them. I got them about there. Yeah, I got them around forty wins too. Spade, before we get to the meat and potatoes, I'm, I'm looking around. San Antonio just signed Demari Carroll and Rudy Gay. We don't got to talk about that. I don't think Demari Carroll was uh-huh. definitely like a Bruce Bowen type. He fits their system. He's going to hit corner threes and shit like that. We don't really got to talk yep. about them much. Um, 
You want to talk about Portland? Or oh, oh, you good when not talking about Portland? Portland, they just signed. They kept Rodney Hood. They signed Anthony Tolliver. They got Hazonia. I don't feel we got to do much. We kind of mentioned Whiteside. They got Hazonia Whiteside. White Side. We kinda, yeah, we kind of mentioned that. If you want to go in debt with there, you can. I mean, I I think they probably got a little better. Really? Hold on. Let me, let me the problem, again. ain't nobody out here saying White Side no scrub. The problem is, do White Side want to play? See, this is the space you said when we were talking about the Heat. You said Bam could give you everything White Side can give you, if not more. But he definitely going to give you a better effort. Definitely. Oh, so, yeah. You know what? And I keep forgetting, they got Kent Baseball. I mean, this could change, but right now they got Kent Baysmore starting in a three spot. Mm-hmm. And to me, uh, Dame, CJ, and Kent on the court at the same time, man, I, I feel like they're very small, man. I don't know about that. I don't know about I'm, that. You, you saying they small like you don't like it, or you like that they're going to go small ball with White Side? Uh, I, I, I don't like starring Kent Baysmore at the three. You have them come off the bench? Absolutely. A six five journeyman, yeah, man, <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> hey, you know what's crazy? When you click on Kent Bazemore name, it's a point guard. It's a six five point guard. Yeah, really. Man. That what it say? That gotta be. I problem. almost would rather them. I I rather them start Rodney Hood at the three or something. I don't. I don't. I don't know, man. I, I don't know if Rodney Hood. Uh, I know Rodney Hood. I think Rodney Hood better off the bench. I mean, Rod, Rodney Hood six eight. I like him at the three over Baysmore. Not I, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on with Portland. I let a Portland fan hit me up and tell me what they think. Hassan feel, Whiteside. You feel I'm they got hoping. better? I don't know. I don't know. This it is what I want to say. It depends on what it, white side we get. It, I was just going to say. Hassan Whiteside, I want to feel like he should have something to prove. I know he heard the cheers in Miami as he was leaving. <laughs> that shit got to piss you off. If he take that there and, and he apply himself, then, yeah, I think they get slightly better, man, because they also are going to get nerfed back at some point. And being able to rotate Whiteside, Nurk, and Zach Collins, hey, I, I want to say they better. My only concern, I don't, I, I'm not a big Baysmore fan anymore. You know, I went through a period where I called him Bang Bang Baysmore. He was mm-hmm. explosive. I ain't seen that guy in a while, bro. Maybe it was just time for a change of scenery. Maybe he needed out of Atlanta. But I don't think Kent Bazemore is the guy that he used to be. In, and and that, he's the big question mark for me on that team. But you are right. It all depends on Hassan Whiteside. Exactly. If Hassan plays with a chip on his shoulder, they're a better team. If Hassan don't, they are not a better team. I, I agree 100%. It's going to depend Simple on Whiteside. And, and then you got to if, – if you're if you're a guy that's like, yo, Whiteside is having one of those – at one point, Whiteside was, we was on this mug asking, asking, is Whiteside one of the best bigs in this league? Like, if Whiteside play like that, or do that have you thinking, oh, Whiteside just doing this because he trying to get this bag again. He trying to get another bag. Because once he got the bag in Miami, I mean, Whiteside went from making, correct me if I'm wrong, Spade, 800000 to making yep. like $90 million or $100 million. Yep, you got it. So... You got to ask yourself, like, yo, is he just motivated by a payday? Or is he going to give us this effort consistently? And I'm going to go with the latter. Like, I don't I don't know if Whiteside is going to be, like, maybe this year he might give it to him. Like, oh, I got to get another bag. But I'll be skeptical to sign Whiteside to, like, another big contract if I'm a team, if I'm a GM in the NBA. I would. But it's the few I mean, more teams he, I want to run. If he could produce. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go I was ahead. just going to say, if he showed anything that he showed in that 2015-2016 season, no doubt about it, that team get better, man. In right. that year, that man averaged 14 points. He averaged 12 rebounds and 3.7 blocks yeah, a man. game. Four blocks a game is insane. Mm-hmm. That's insane, Doc. If he can get any of this, if he can get him, i take those numbers down. If he can get him 12 points, 10 boards, and two blocks, they're a better team. Yeah, it's going to depend on him. Spade, I want to talk about. I, I did. I we, we was in the East. We didn't talk about Detroit because you had a problem with Detroit signing Derrick Rose. I don't have a problem with it. I just, I don't know why, bro. I can't. I'm having a hard time seeing Derrick Rose in, in Detroit. Detroit. I'm having a hard time seeing Derrick Rose and Blake Griffin as teammates. I'm, I'm having a hard time. I'm gonna. 
I'm going to make a public apology to Deck Rose. Oh, yes. It's my hot take for your ass. I'm going to make a... <laughs> I'm going to make a public apology to Dag Rose Spade. I said on this show, I question whether Dag Rose was just playing basketball for the money. Oh, I remember that. After what he did last year in Minnesota, Spade, when he, to me, in my opinion, he was clearly the best guard they had. And I know they had Teague. And Absolutely. He was Absolutely. clearly the, the best guard they had. But And I, if I'm not mistaken, somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. I think Dag Rose was playing out there for like $3 million. Yeah, man. And, and to NBA, and I know $3 million is a lot of damn money to us. But NBA money, $3 million is like nothing. Like it's nothing compared to what Dag Rose was making. But I got to give a, pu- a, pu- a public apology to Dag Rose. I want to apologize to Dag Rose because I said I, I question whether that man was just only playing for the bread because he was like, yo, I'm good at back. I, I question whether he wanted to still do this thing. And the way Dag Rose played last year, I got to apologize. Now, he in Detroit, Spade, I, Detroit is one of those teams, man. First of all, I I, I, I root for Dwayne Casey because I ain't like how Toronto treated Dwayne Casey. So, for that reason, I want Detroit to be a solid basketball team. I want them to be in the mix. I want them to be better than last year, and I know they went to the playoffs. If I'm not mistaken, they got swept. Um, but I want them to be better, and I think Derrick Rose can get – I mean – Derrick Rose or Reggie Jackson. I'm I'm taking Derrick Rose. So I think he can definitely Absolutely. help that team become a better a better team. But I'm gonna apologize to Derrick Rose, man. That man showed me it wasn't just for the money. That man was playing for the love of the game, and he proved that to me last year. So I apologize, Derrick Rose. I apologize. Bro, that was big, man. I ain't never heard you apologize. You don't, yeah, I don't, don't, I don't do apologize. That. I don't. <laughs> I don't. Spade, I want to talk about Phoenix real quick. Uh, Phoenix signed Frank Kaminsky. They also signed Ricky Rubio. And I seen, before you go, Spade, I seen a lot of people saying, yo, why didn't Phoenix bust the move for D'Angelo Russell? And in my opinion, Spade, I want you, I'm going to get your thoughts on this. In my opinion, D'Angelo Russell and Devin Booker, to me, it, it's not a fit. I think Phoenix, in my opinion, need a guy like a, a, a Ricky Rubio that can facilitate, get eight and some easy baskets, facilitate get Devin Booker some open looks, get T.J. Warren some easy baskets. I feel like Phoenix is the perfect spot for Ricky Rubio. How do you feel about that? I like it. I like it. Uh, I am somewhat concerned, though, because, you know, with Warren going out of there, with them not signing back Kelly Oubre, I'm looking at that team, and, I, you know, Rubio's not really a scorer, though. So, DeAndre Ayton, you – feed him I, I'm still not so on Aiden they do have Tyler Johnson who I guess now is going to be Rubio's backup I guess he's going to be the backup point guard he's coming mm. off the bench maybe he's going to back up Devin Booker at the two I'm not really sure Where right. I would not have hated um D'Lo on this team because sometimes really? Devin Booker's off and that's true I just I, I'm looking at the makeup of this team and if Devin Booker's having one of his off days I really don't know who your scorer is you know, and, and you know, I like Tyler Johnson. I don't know if Tyler's that guy either. Tyler been hit and miss. You know, he was hit and miss in his days in Miami. Mm-hmm. Obviously, when he's on, he's a hell of a player. Josh Jackson is still a young guy. Maybe they feel like he can turn into somebody. Bro, you said they went and got Frank Kaminsky. Don't they got don't, Bender? Don't, don't, don't say it. You better not say it. Frank Kaminsky is Bro. way better than Bender. That, that's not what I'm... I'm not, I'm not trying to Spade, say I'm, they're the same person. Me, go ahead, go ahead. But, go ahead. but getting Frank Kaminsky make Bender, why, is, why have both? I, I don't know if they got... Do they still got Bender? Let me look. I don't know. Let me look. Man, you, you know I, I'm hard on Bender. They probably Phoenix don't. Because if they did, you know where he would be? Back in the damn summer league. <laughs> <laughs> Spade, I don't think he could be in the summer league no more, bro. Man, he'll find a way in. He'll change his name to Dragoon and, and grow his mustache out, be in there in disguise. It might, not be, it might not be updated, but let me look and see if they still got Bender. Let me see if Bender. Damn, they say Bender still on the signs. Now, I don't know if this is updated or not. Somebody going to correct us in the comment section. Spade, I don't even think they got Josh Jackson no more. And I, I, I said TJ Warren, but I meant Bridges. They got Bridges. They got that other Bridges brother. But I said TJ Warren. But I think uh, Rubio can get Bridges some easy looks. So they don't. Yo, 
Listen, I, I I think listen, it's Phoenix, so it's going to be tough anyway. I Spade, me and you had on this show, and we know we had some Phoenix fans that watched. I said I don't have Phoenix getting over thirty wins. I still don't have Phoenix getting over thirty wins, even with Kaminsky and Ricky Rubio. I don't either. I don't have. I don't over thirty wins. Spade, did, let me. I don't either. Did T.J. Warren go to Indiana too? I think he went to Indiana. He went to where? To the Pacers. Oh the yeah, Pacers. okay. Yeah, so I, I was I, missing I said T.J. Warren, Wilson, but I meant the Bridges brother because they got the other Bridges. But that was that's that's the Phoenix Suns in that show. We don't we both don't have them getting over thirty wins like we said early in the year. Spade, I'm looking around. Before we get to the meet, you want to go to? Let's go Lakers. Let's go Lakers. I was going to say Dallas, but Dallas didn't really. Dallas signed Seth, who was already there uh, before he went to Portland. They got JJ Barea. They signed Chris Sapps. Uh, by um, they 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 try they signed Boban Marjanovic and Dory, like, everything stayed the same except for them getting Seth. So I'm looking around in the West and I don't see nothing else. Let's go Lakers. Okay, let's go let's Lakers. Go Lakers. So I like Spade, what they doing, bro? Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me set. Let me set the. Let I me like set the tone for. Them. Let me set the tone for. Them. Like so it. Lakers. I'm hyped. Lakers. We already know they traded for Anthony Davis. Gave up them the whole team. They gave up. Mm-hmm. They gave up damn near the whole team. And um, Spade, I mean, people was like, yo, Lakers and Kawhi, Lakers and Kawhi. Everybody had their sauces out and, you know, that, that, didn't, that didn't come to fruition. But they signed Jared Dudley. Yep. They signed Troy Daniels. Yep. They signed Danny Green. They brought yep. back Contavious Caldwell Pope. Yep. They, timed, they, they brought back. JaVel McGee? Yep. Hey, well, what's making you love it so much? Because they also just got Boogie Cousins, too, man. They just signed Boogie Cousins. Breaking news? Breaking news, man. Wow. So you know what they did? Everybody was saying, like, oh, Kawhi is holding these teams hostage. So at first, it was looking like the Lakers only had Brun, AD, and Kuzma. That was it. Like you said, they start bringing in some pieces to kind of fill out the roster. So, oh, let's, let's get Jared Dudley. Let's get this person. Let's get this person. Bro, as soon as they realized they didn't get Kawhi, they got mm-hmm. on the grind and said, give me the best we can find and we'll make it work. They went and got Danny Green, who we know at times, look, in the postseason last year, he was a streaky shooter, but let's not forget in the regular season last year, that boy shot 45% from three. Yeah, I think that was his best season. And he's a two-way player. He'll play some defense out there too. Oh yeah, three and D guys, know. definitely. That's a fact. Brian need, you know, Brian needs some guys who can play some defense. He needs some scrappy players. They brought back Javale McGee and said Javale is probably going to be the starter. And when they said probably, I was thinking, you ain't know something. I don't. What the hell you mean? Probably. Mm-hmm. Listen, man, Boogie Cousins was out there. It was looking rough for him, man. People was memeing his head. On Will Smith's body in that episode where Will Smith said, why they don't want me no more? Mm-hmm. His value was low. He just got hurt again. It was going to have to be a team to scoop him up that felt like he could just be that piece when he was ready. When he was ready. And I, I like what the Lakers did, man. You're going to look at it somebody like, oh, man, I'm so glad the Lakers didn't get three superstars. But eh, it depends on what type of form Boogie gets back to. If Boogie get back to a decent form, putting Boogie and AD right. back on the same damn team again, Come on, bro. Man. Come on, man. Hey. Spade. All I this, like it. All you need is a healthy Boogie. Healthy Boogie is 25 and 10. Easy. Easy. Duh. It's a war going on in L.A., and I'm <laughs> here for it. <laughs> yes. I want to see it. That, that is a fact. That is a fact. Hey. Hey. Spade, breaking news, they got Boogie. That junk is crazy. And, and the bro, crazy they thing better, is Spade, bro. Come on, man. They got, they got Brian, man. You, you, gave up, you gave up Ingram. You gave up Ball. You gave up Hart. You kept Kuzma. Spade, 
It's a war going on in L.A., bro. <laughs> you ain't lying. That's perfect. It is a war going on in L.A. right now. And, it's crazy because I was about to ask you who you, but I'm going to save it until after we talk Clippers. But I got to say, okay. I, they, they, the, the Lakers are de- 100% better. They are better. And you want to know what? I seen people exactly. last night fans saying, oh, my gosh, the Lakers need a point guard. And it, it was a report, a rumor going around that they, they kind of Enos Cantor Rondo was like, yo, we give you this amount of money. You got to this day to decide. So I don't know what Rondo going to do if he decided to be coming back or not. But Spade, it, they don't need no point guard. They can have LeBron run the point. Run. I'm going to say LeBron, LeBron can run is the point, point guard. Come on, man. They don't need no point guard. LeBron can run the point. So, I mean, I'm not mad at what the Lakers is doing. I did, I did not see the boogie signing coming. People were speculating that Dwight may head, head there because Dwight got traded from the Wiz and he's going to get waived by Memphis. And, I mean, I, I, I don't think the Lakers done. I think they still might sign a guy like an Avery I Bradley. I don't, I don't think, think they're they done either, bro. I don't think they're done. Kyle Corver might may get waived. They might bring in Corver. It was a, Kyle it was a, definitely going to end up there. It was a rumor that – uh. That um, J.R. Smith may get bought out. They might get him. So, I mean, they just getting folks, and they're going to figure it out during the season for this playoff run. Spade, yep. I'm, I'm trying to look real quick because we didn't talk about New Orleans. I don't know if we, you want to talk about New Orleans. They signed J.J. Reddick. We already know all the trades they made. We talked about that earlier. But real quick before we go to the Clippers, J.J. Reddick to New Orleans, how you feel about that? Solid pickup, man. Like, Reddick's a veteran. He, same thing that we just said about Jeff Green, but, I mean, you can get more offensive production from J.J. Reddick, but he's been around the league. He understands the way the game is played, and he's tried and true. You're going to be able to plug him in. My concern out there is I think they still got Jaleel Okafor, who is like the last of the back-to-the-basket players. Yeah. Like, you're going to have Jaleel trying to go back to the basket. You're going to have Zion run a half-back dive. And if, if if they're effective, I'm already worried about them being in each other way. I feel like they kind of need a big that can get out the damn paint so Zion can really do what he do. But mm-hmm. if they have success with that, man, you're going to need some people you can kick it out to that you can depend on and knock the basket down. And like you said, man, they got my boy uh, Darius Miller, who's a, a sniper. You got Reddit. So, yeah, man, on paper, I like what they got. My, my only concern is if they're going to come out here and put the ball in Zion's hand every time and let it, you know, say – this is our future. We're going to run it through Zion. I just I don't know how well that'll work. But I, I like what they did. Again, they realized they was losing AD. And they said, all right, we're going to make the best out of it. And they bust some moves. And I think they're in a really good spot. Really good spot. I mean, I, I just like what they, I just like what Dave David Griffin is doing over there, man. Like, hey, you know, he's setting it up. Got a lot of young talent. But they, they, they trying to attempt to go at least make a playoff run this year with all that young talent. Spade, do you have them? I got him around. I got him around the forty, the forty win, forty win mark. I don't know if that's going to get you in the playoffs in the West, but I got him around 40, 40 wins. Where you got him? Uh, uh no, no. They didn't win forty last year. No, they ain't win forty last year. They ain't win thirty five last year. Hmm. I got him in the low thirty still. I, I actually think, yeah, I got him. Okay. This is what they're here for. This is, this what, is they, what I'm here for. This is what they here, this is what you're here for. Hey, Spade, let me let me set it up. So Kawhi, Kawhi was, you know, winning the championship with the Raptors. Free agency starts. Everybody's like, oh, Kawhi's taking his time. It was a whole bunch of reports, Spade. What is Kawhi going to do? Reporters were saying, Spade, Ka- Kawhi's... Going to end up with the Lakers. Raptors has has a chance. Clippers is out. So, you know, I had everybody like, oh, Kawhi just announced this shit. Reporters was out there like, Kawhi's doing some real soul searching. Other reporters was like, Clippers don't have the chance. Other reporters were saying, Lakers in the front running. It's, it's the Lakers. Kawhi is the Lakers to mess up. Like, he's going to the Lakers un- unless the Lakers mess it up. Spade, last night something happened. Late last night, too. Yeah. It was like 2 in the morning. This morning. It was t- yeah, this morning something happened. It was 2 in the morning. People was watching Summer League. It was an earthquake in, like on the West Coast in Las Vegas. It was uh, You can feel it from 150 miles. 
LA felt it. Game, summer league games got canceled. Speakers was moving, rattling. Jumbo trines was moving. Spade is crazy. Two in the morning, Kawhi announced that he was going to the Los Angeles Clippers and shook the damn whole NBA. The I mean, world. Everybody was like, what yeah. the hell is going on? But not only that, Spade. Not only that. Not only that. We we got alerts. I mean, this was going crazy. Whoa, Sam. Everybody, Sham, everybody was tweeting and was like, Paul George has been traded to the Clippers. It was like, wait, what? What is going on? Spay yeah. immediately, yeah. immediately hit my line like, bro, what the? And I'm like, yo, I don't know what's going on, bro. Spade said, yo. Spade said this. I had sent the tweet to Spade earlier. I mean, afterwards. Spade said to me on the phone, Kawhi had to be in touch with Paul George for this to go down like this. Had to be. And Spade. Nothing made sense, bro. Spade, we already know what the Clippers did. They brought back Pat Bev. I mean, we love. Listen, I don't care who the damn starting guard on my team is. I don't care who playing. Pat Bev could be on my team. Any day of the week. Never lie. Suit up Pat Bev for me. I, I, look, they brought back Pat Bev. They got Ronnie Magruder. They got Rodney Magruder, another tough uh, guy from Miami. Spade, they got Paul George and Kawhi in it. And it, it, I mean, v- Vegas instantly made these guys the favorite. They are the favorite to win the NBA championship. Spade, talk to me about the Clippers. I want to talk about Kawhi first. Oh, go, go. Okay, go. I like Kawhi. Okay. It's hard to not like Kawhi Leonard, bro. Let me tell you what Kawhi did. They said Kawhi calls runner-up teams to confirm with them that he is indeed signing with the Clippers. He a G. And I said, wow, man. And and, and then I thought, LaParis, can you imagine how them calls went? Oh, how'd the call go? Ka- Ka- why? Hello? Hello. <laughs> oh, Kawhi, hey, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's how he did the Lakers. <laughs> Look, then he called Toronto. Uh, Hello? Hello? Hey, Kawhi, you know it's like 2 o'clock? At- hey, hey. Nope. <laughs> the pastor's like, Spade, it's like 2.30 in the morning. I said, you know where it ain't 2.30 in the morning? On the West, L.A. On the West Coast, he said that. He said that. <laughs> Look, man, the thing, the news that came out that was shocking to me is I, I love Kawhi. I got nothing bad to say about Kawhi. I'm on record as saying after Kawhi was everything that the Spurs wanted him to be until he had an injury. And then when he got that injury, he didn't feel like he was ready. And look, man, I'm huge on, I won't let you tell me something different than I feel. Like if, if I'm hurt, I don't give a shit if you dock the house, bro. You can't tell me I'm not hurt. I know what the fuck I feel. You can't tell me what I feel. So I felt Kawhi when he got to the point where his team, his teammates, his coach, the local media, everybody was challenging him like he weak or he soft. Like, yo, so now all of a sudden, all, everything I've done for y'all through all these years, we're throwing all that out the window and y'all questioning me because I don't feel like I'm healthy, I want out. That's the same way I would have handled it, bro. Once we get to the point that you blatantly looking me in my face and calling me a liar, I want out. I'm out. They thought they were smart, bro. They sent him as far away from where he desired to go, which was L.A. He said this shit a whole year ago. Mm-hmm. I want to go to L.A. They said, you know what? Send this song bitch out the damn country. And they sent him to Toronto. And he said, bet. And he took him to the championship and won that shit. Right. And I said, after that, to me, Kawhi don't owe anybody anything. Kawhi can go anywhere he wants to go. Right. And I saw folks on my timeline saying ignorant shit like, it'll be a weak move if Kawhi go to L.A., Look, man, it can't be no weak move when you took a damn franchise that's never been to the finals <clears throat> since they were born to the finals and won that shit and carried them on your back. Right. Look, man, I love Fred Van Vliet, and to me, he made himself one of those players that I'll never forget in this postseason run. But let's be clear here. If you remove Kawhi Leonard from oh, that man. team, y'all some bitches get smoked so long ago. Sp- so please don't think it was y'all. Sp- don't think it was either one of y'all. It was Kawhi Leonard. Dog. Let's keep it 100. And I, I don't want to be that guy because the Warriors got a lot of their championships on the backs of other people's injuries. 
CP3 went Absolutely. down. LeBron didn't have love and Kyrie. So I ain't even about to be that guy, but I'm going to be that guy. Let's be honest. If the Warriors is 100%, Tom- Toronto lose. Toronto lose. With Kawhi. And, and Bro, Kawhi was a... They ain't got to be 100%. They ain't got to be 100%. Go if Kevin Durant is hurt, but Looney's 100% healthy and, and Clay's 100% healthy, they still beat Toronto. They still beat them. Word. I mean, they ain't a hundred percent. That's ninety. If they ninety percent, they beat them. <laughs> I mean, I, it, Spade. I, you know, the crazy thing is, I've seen people saying stuff like, "Oh, you know, listen, Kawhi should be able to go into Toronto right now and get anything he want for free, right now, right now." Because without Kawhi, they don't win. Kawhi, I think Kawhi has something crazy, like ten to twelve straight games over thirty points. Kawhi, one hundred percent. Backpack Toronto, 100%. Now, I'm not hit, sitting here saying ain't nobody else out. Like you said, Van, Van Vliet hit some big shots. Kyle Lowry played amazing in that last game. But let's be honest. We, let's be clear. Let's be clear. Like, it was Kawhi. Spade, I, I, I kind of think the calls went. I kind of think the calls went like Kawhi calling them people on the phone. The phone's ring. Kawhi picked it. They, they, Kawhi, they was like, hello? Kawhi was like, what the hell? <laughs> nigga said, "What the? Nigga was, oh, you think you could defeat my challenge? <laughs> like, I, like, it's hey, Kawhi is the one player. Kawhi is the one dude that I feel like none of like people was like, yo, Kawhi's doing some soul. These reporters was like, Kawhi doing some soul searching. Man, Kawhi wasn't doing no. He was, yo, it was reported that Kawhi had talked to Paul George." In the beginning of the week. And why was that, Spade? Spade, you told me something I didn't even know. Kawhi was trying to get KD to come with him. They said that Kawhi wanted to team up with KD. Hmm. At which point KD made his mind up that he was going to Brooklyn. Man, and I I don't, look, man, don't make me slander uh, Paul George. I like Paul George. But Paul George got that, that frame. He's tall. He's slender. Let's be honest. He is like an off-brand KD. We've been saying this, though. And I don't want to say off-brand because that sounds like I'm dissing. But I think, and I, I can come out and tell y'all, I don't have no sources. This is my opinion. I think as soon as Kevin Durant signed with Brooklyn, mm-hmm. I think Kawhi was instantly hitting up Paul George. And everybody was saying that, like, LaPage, what were they saying? He was doing what? Collecting his thoughts? What was he doing? Who? What, what uh Kawhi? What they thought Kawhi was doing all the time? Oh, uh, soul searching. They said he was Man, soul searching. All he was doing, all he was doing, was giving the Clippers time to make do on what they said they was gonna do. Shout, shout now out. they got the report. The report came yeah. out that he said he wasn't a huge fan of joining a quote unquote super team with LeBron and AD in LA, mm. and for that reason, he was leaning toward going back to Toronto. But he still wanted to be in L.A. Dorothy told y'all no place like home. Y'all gonna start listening to these people. Mm-hmm. But say he told the Clippers, look, man, if y'all can get Paul George here, I'm coming. And I imagine they must have told that man, give me a week. Give me some time. Let me see what I can shake. And he said, cool. The rest of the shit was just him hanging out. So it wasn't no soul searching. None of sure this other wasn't. shit that people talking about, it was, it was none of that. Sure it was wasn't. waiting to see if the Clippers was going to be able to make that, a shake. Because his mindset was, look. We saying Clippers, but we mean Jerry West. Jerry West got on we the horn like, West. yo, give me a few days and watch me work Watch me work this magic. Watch. And, bro, I got to be honest with Go you. Ahead. It was a lot of folks on my timeline saying stuff like, Jerry West proves again why he's the logo. I kind of want to combat that. I think the fact that Jerry West is the logo, I think it's, I think it's more power than people even understand. And again, I don't have no sources here. This is a hot take. But if you believe that the NBA have not, over the years, how long had Jerry West had a relationship with the NBA, bro? Like, bro, I don't even want to throw a number out there. That's how wrong I'm going to be. But if you think Jerry West ain't got some powerful people in some powerful places that can pull some powerful strings, you out your damn mind. So when you see Pat Riley make some of the moves he can make, when you see Jerry West making some of the moves they can make, look, man, I love Elton Brand. Elton Brand ain't got the power these dudes got, bro. He don't. He don't. 
and, and Jerry West, I'm going to go ahead and say it so people can go ahead and get upset with me. I don't really talk about or really even believe in the Illuminati. Say what you want to say about <laughs> it. But if you want to say that the NBA got something like the Illuminati behind the scenes, if it, if that exists, Jerry West in it. Let's be, let's be honest, bro. Let's look at some of his big trades throughout history. Yo, since he, yeah, yes, bro, yes. he make deals. Yes, that shit. I know. What can Jerry West say to you? Jerry West can't tell me shit. We don't. We don't. We ain't got nothing in common. He not from where I'm from. He can't relate to me. I don't relate to him. We got nothing in common. But you know what? When you get on the phone with somebody who got that kind of power and he start telling you the things that he can do, the mountains he can move, that shit makes shit happen, bro. I don't think he got nothing to do with anything else. I think I think Kawhi wanted to go to L.A. because that's his home. That's where he's from. Just like his Paul George's home. Just like his Russell Westbrook's home. Just like his uh, DeMar DeRozan's home. Like so many other folks are from that area. I think when they talked to Kawhi, and Kawhi probably told him stone face, like, if you can get Paul George, I'm coming. Otherwise, I'm looking at this roster and shit, man. You know, I might as well stay where I am. I might as well stay where I am. I guarantee you, man. I don't know what conversation Jerry West had with the the GM and owners of OKC, but I guarantee you it was some power moves being made, man. I guarantee you. I guarantee you, LaPaz. Spade, do you agree with that, or you I think mean, I'm some, reaching? It had to be something, Spade. But I, 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 Spade, I instantly when we was talking on the phone last night, I instantly said, "What happened, Westbrook? Westbrook and Paul George was just in the club together. What friends? What happened, bro? It was a tweet that went out maybe last night. Jalen Rose was like, "Yo, I'm not here for no Westbrook slander." And Paul George said, at all. What? What? What happened? It, something happened. Spade instantly was like, yo, something is up. It's some behind the scenes shit that we ain't going to probably never know. And I, I mean, because that shit just don't happen. They was like, yo, I'm, people was, I'm reading the reply, Spade, and people like, Paul George requested a trade. When? When? That shit would have been Quietly. broadcasted all over the TV. When? Yeah, man. Nobody heard that. That shit. Uh, Nobody it, heard that. That shit crazy, man. I, hey, listen. It, it's one of those situations. I mean, Jay West done finagled some of the biggest NBA deals. Some of the biggest. I mean, it got Shaq from Orlando. Like, some of the biggest deals Jerry West has been involved in. Jay West had Memphis in the mix when he was over there at Memphis. Like, wherever Jerry West go, he kind of turned it into gold for whatever reason. So, whether you whether you think it's Illuminati or Jerry West just being a tactician, I don't know what it is. But he gets shit done. He gets it done. And um, you're looking around this league, man, and, you, I mean, it, you're looking at that roster. I guess it's going who? Paul, I mean, it's going Pat Bev, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, um, Montrez probably not starting. Montrez probably coming off the bench. I know they got Zub out. Who the who the power forward? Damn, who the hell if I know? I know they got Montrez out, but I don't know if he's gonna be. I don't know if he's gonna be starting at the. I mean, you could put him at the four. He's still a beast. But I mean, you looking at that roster? I don't know because Gallinari got shipped. Yeah, too. Gall- you know he got hey, shipped in what, this deal. So what was I, OKC thinking? What were they thinking? But I will tell you this. I will tell you this. If <laughs> y'all not gonna like me saying this, but I don't know if Jerry West got on the phone with Buddy and was like, "Look, I want to make this deal with you." There's two different ways we can do this shit, man. You can try to come out of this thing the best you can and give me what I need, or I can make some calls, man, and I'm gonna get what I need either way. I can make it where you never, you never work in this league again. I, I know, I know what y'all thinking, Spade. Maybe you watch too many damn mobster movies, and y'all may be right. But if I am Whoever made the call for OKC, right? If Paul George just instantly hit me up one day like, hey, I want to I be traded to LA. I want to be traded to the Clippers. Bro, you just read up. We just signed you to a four-year deal. So I don't have to, not only do I not have to honor that, I don't have to send you to the team you want to be right. sent to. So why the hell I'm telling you something in this shit don't feel like it don't feel like a regular trade to me. I almost, I feel like them boys were strong-armed into making this move. And, 
And you got to say this. Somebody was like, oh, well, you know, if they, they want to rebuild. What, what do you mean rebuild? They was right there. They was just in. The, no, man. No. I think they got strong arm into moving PG. And if you got to move PG, this is what you say. All right. And I just spoke on the same thing with, with Washington. All right. If we lose PG, we might as well go ahead and, 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 and cut ties with Westbrook, too. And we might as well go ahead and try to get picks and get everything we need to rebuild. Because if word come out later that Paul George demanded a trade, because fans didn't know. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. If word come out later that Paul George demanded a trade and you ignored it, and he end up leaving later, and you get no assets for it, the fans are never going to forgive you. They're never going to forgive you unless it... Unless you holding him a hostage results in you winning a, a ring. If they, they say, no, we ain't trading him, and they win a ring next year, all is well. They say, no, we ain't trading him, and then he, you know, he ain't playing right. He got that attitude. He don't want to be there. He start, it, it's just bad. It's bad. So, I get it. But Paris, I'm going to let you talk on this situation because I feel like I'm rambling. But you know this situation ain't over, right? Uh, Spade, I got an alert on my phone maybe an hour ago. It said Westbrook and his agent are talking with the Thunder GM, Sam Presti, about the next steps with a possible trade before next season. That's what it says. Yeah, man. So it looks like Westbrook is going to be on I, the move, too. I fully expect Westbrook to be on the move. I expect you, Westbrook to be on the spot move. You got a landing spot or no? I don't have a spot yet because it's going to be some teams that's going to try to jump into play and see what they can do. The funny thing is, man, I almost expect the Knicks to try to get in it, but I see Knicks fans on my timeline saying that they they not interested. I was talking, hey, Stack said he don't want a point guard to shoot 29% from three-point line like DSJ and RJ Barrett spraying up from out there. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I ain't guarding either one of them from out there. Like, they're going to have to prove to me that they can make it. But Westbrook on the move, bro. Westbrook is I, I on mean, the move. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm buying it. I'm, I'm buying it. And you know, I seen people on the timeline saying, "Oh, this is this is this is Westbrook's fault." How? I see people was blaming people are ignorant man, people and Westbrook was the cool James person Harden. to bash. They was blaming they was blaming Westbrook for James Harden, KD, Serge Ibaka, and now Paul George. That's not the case. That is not the case. I, I, Paul, uh, Westbrook unfollowed Paul George. I guarantee you, Westbrook was blindsided by this shit. He ain't see, they was just in the club. He didn't see this shit. Come on, man. It, it, now, you know what would be funny? Whoa. Lakers. And I don't know how they could do Lakers. it. Lakers. I was finna say. The Lakers been signing up any damn thing with, with sneakers. <laughs> if, if you got some hoop shoes, the Lakers been signing them up. Man, if the Lakers threw a package together and got Westbrook, it would blow my mind. It would blow my you mind. You would put Westbrook space. back in LA where he's from, and then you would give him the crosstown rivalry against the Clippers where he could take out all his frustrations against Paul George for making him look crazy. The crazy thing is that the Lakers just gave up all their damn picks to the Pelicans. It's the only thing. They did. That's the only thing. They did. It's the only thing I was like, I'm like, the Lakers is not going to work unless they can get a, I don't know why a third team will come in there and help the Lakers like that. Especially if they're not getting anything, but I, I, I mean, I would love it, but I don't see it because the Lakers just gave up all them picks to the uh to the Pels. So I don't, you know, they look like they gave up everything. If they blow them up, if they blow it up, if uh OKC blow it up, then I don't think it's gonna be the Lakers because they don't got nothing to trade. At least I mean, I don't, you know, P they traded PG. They did get five first round picks, the most first round picks ever in NBA history. So at least you can say that. And they got Gallinari and uh, Gil Chris Alexander. I think that's how you say his name. Somebody gonna correct me if I'm wrong. But they got that dude. So they got five picks and two players. So that's gonna end up being seven players for Paul George. So it's crazy. I don't think it'll be a team that is doing the oh we should rebuild. It's a team that's in play. If he goes somewhere, he's going to go to a team that's in play. And I don't know who that'll be, but it's going to be a team that's in play. Do you? What about what about Miami? A lot of people keep saying Miami. And, hey, I'm a Westbrook fan. I wouldn't be mad if we got him. I wouldn't understand it necessarily. 
I wouldn't understand it. I mean, of course, we would have to move Dragic, who's on that expiring, so that would work good for OKC. And I think we'd probably have to move some more. Yeah, I mean, like, we would, might as well have to get get rid of Winslow because it would be no point in keeping him. I, I just listen. Spade Vegas got Clippers as the favorite. Do you got them as the consensus favorite right now? Uh, as it stood, let me say, as it stood last night, Boogie Boogie wasn't signed last night. But are they still the favorite with the Lakers with Boogie? In, in your in your your opinion. Ah, uh, shit. I don't know, man. I, I hate crowning teams that I ain't seen play yet. That's a but fact. On paper, that's a damn good team, man, because they are so defensively scrappy. Ain't nobody really just having their way with Kawhi. Paul George was also just, in my opinion, he was just defensive player of the year. He should have won defensive player of the year. And we all know what you get from Pat Bev. Uh, Harold, on paper, probably. Probably. I just put a tweet out and said, man, y'all y'all fans is changing teams. I need to know where you at. And the homie QJB hit me right back and said, hey, put me down for the Clippers, man. I'm going to tell you something about Q. He just Q said would he was jump a his fan. ass on a wagon. Not no more. He said, put me down for the Clippers. He tweeted me back, bro. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something about Q. Q would jump his ass on the wagon quick. Oh, yeah. And I'm talking about I can respect it when you ain't got no shame. Q don't try to be one of them guys to be like, I've been here, man. Q be like, I'm on the way. <laughs> Who got traded? I'm on the way. That's crazy, bro. The the Clippers shocked the world last they night. Did. And I want people to keep I ain't the pants, let me ask you this. Are you mad at Paul George? Am I mad at Paul George? Yes. No, but I'm but I'm no, I'm not mad at Paul George. And uh no, I, I but I was one of them people that wasn't mad at Kawhi. If Kawhi would have went to the Lakers, I wasn't one of them. I, Spade, Kawhi, if whatever Kawhi decided, I, I was good with. Because Kawhi, he, um, it, from the beginning, when he was with the Spurs, said, I'm on, I want to go to L.A. I want to go to L.A. And they said, nah, yep. take your ass to Toronto. And and he backpacked them to a championship. I don't want to hear nothing from nobody about no Kawhi. And you, but even with all of that, Kawhi don't give a damn what any of these people got to say. Anyway, he ain't even on social media. The last thing Kawhi tweeted was like in 2017, and it was like his logo, the claw. Like that was like 2017 or 16 or some shit. I'm not mad at Paul George, babe. I'm not, but I'm mad. I'm mad at the. I'm mad at the response that people is giving Westbrook. That's what I'm mad at. Well, I'm laughing because I just checked Twitter while you was talking, and mm. Twitter seems to think that uh, Russell Westbrook should be reunited with James Harden, and of course. Of course, Stack says a Westbrook and Harden backcourt sounds trash. So man, look, I should be better that, than that. Ain't gonna work anyway. I mean, um, CP3 it can't be no um, damn worse than. It can't be no worse than that. Yeah. So, I mean, the money, the money match, <laughs> the money match. Though you still gotta throw what's the name some picks though, but the money match. How you feel about oh, that as a Houston, Houston fan? Got the assets, bro. Yeah, I'm not no Houston fan, bro. I'm just cut that out. Just, cut that out. I'm just asking, bro. Bro, my team got Jimmy Butler. Fact. Okay, we out here. Yeah, we out here too. You ain't see you ain't see our summer league last night. No, we kicked the Lakers. No, out. y'all not out here. Yes, we are. No, y'all not. Bro, we out here. Y'all not out here. Bro, we signed Thad Young. We signed Sadaransky. We out here. You keep saying something about some rice, and I don't understand that. Yo, we out here. We out here. Y'all not Listen, out here. Listen, man. I, I seen people saying... Seen people saying a lot of things about... Speed. What? I, I, I just... I got I can't get my thoughts together, Speed, because I'm still in shock for last night. Mm-hmm. And I told you... I, I, Speed, I'm going to say it. I'm going to tell you what I said last night. You can bleep me. Let editing bleep me. Cut the pee. I don't care. I told, if I'm OKC, I'd have told Paul George, you want to be traded. You got, you can eat it. I told Paul George, eat it. You just read up here. You just read up here. You're going to be a professional, and you're going to play. <laughs> you're going to play here. And then what I would have did, Paul George got, I think he got two more years, and then that fourth year is a, a player option. 
that third year, right before the trade deadline, I'd have traded Paul George ass. That's what I'd have did. All right. All right, that's all fine and dandy until Jerry West called you and threatened your life. Tell you he got people in high places that can make you disappear. Yeah, man. Hey, Spade, you, you can know go to you, the corner store on, one day and people will never see your shit. ass again. You on your Scarface shit. I don't think Jerry West moving wondering. like that. I'm thinking Jerry West is on the phone. This is how I think Jerry West on the phone. Like, look, we know Paul George is one of your best players. He uh, he was an MVP caliber player, a defensive player of the year caliber player, a defensive player of the year. First of all, that, that's how calm you think Jerry West is? I'm, I'm, I'm not saying he's using his tone. I'm just saying how. Okay. The words. And listen, we're not trying to rob y'all. How about we're going we gonna, to we gonna set. We, listen, y'all going to give us Paul George and we're going to give y'all the most lucrative amount of picks ever in NBA history. This is going to be the best deal y'all can get. Because if y'all wait closer to the. Uh, Y'all, y'all wait a few years. It's not going to be this because now he can just opt out and y'all going to get nothing. That's how I think it went. He said, yo, I'm going to look out for y'all and give y'all the most amount of picks everywhere and throw y'all a solid young player and a veteran in Gallinari. This is going to be the best y'all can get. Y'all giving me Paul George. Y'all getting potentially seven players in return. And, I mean, I, I maybe the OKC... OKC dude threw his hands with strap and he, he, he wasn't out there big dog, big nuts, and was like, yo, I got to bust a move because we just going to lose him. I done told Paul George, your ass is staying. You was just paid. People want to people wanna say, oh, this is proof nobody can play with Westbrook. Westbrook took the back seat and just had Paul George in the MVP race, and Paul George just put together his best Year as a pro. What? That's that's facts. That's facts. So how does this prove that can't nobody play with Westbrook? I done told Paul George, you better sit your ass down. All right. You might be right. Maybe Jerry West is a nice guy. Maybe he just so called he gave him, and keep him the most high 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 until they got it done. NBA history. If, if he I on that boss hall shit it, you on, he just been like, yo, take this first round pick. Take God and not bro. keeping the young PG. That's it. Bro, they gave them unprotected picks to the team favored to win the fucking championship. I, dog. Spade, That's what they I, gave Spade, them. I, I, bro, I get it. I, 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 Spade, I said that to you last night. We expected what they gave. these picks to be late first round picks. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. It, it just, that shit shocked the hell out of me. It shocked the And I'm still shocked. I'm still shocked because it just came Listen, out of man, nowhere. Uh, I want to take, I want to take a small break right here, man. And I want to, you know, we've been talking for a minute. I want to let the the listeners, viewers, weigh in right here. Pause the podcast, weigh in on just the overall moves because you know what, man. As as sports fans, or as basketball fans, we've been bitching about parity for a long time. We got sick and tired of seeing Golden State versus Cleveland every damn year. Right. And this offseason is the craziest NBA offseason I've ever seen in my entire life. I, I am legitimately excited for next season. I don't give a shit who win. I'm just hyped by the fact that we don't know. And even though Vegas is saying it's the Clippers, I ain't sold on that either. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm hyped. I'm really hyped, bro. We might as well move forward now. We got to talk about some NBA Summer League action. It, look. In between free agency being crazy, some of these games was actually being played, and we got one of their most overhyped matchups mm-hmm. in summer league history last yeah. night. The Knicks versus the Pels, RJ Barrett versus Zion Williamson and LaPares. I don't like to be super hard on these young kids because they're going to figure it out, and it, it take them a while. But I'm going to be honest with you. That game was not good, and neither one of those guys played impressively to me. They did not. Okay? Mm-hmm. Listen. You you with me? I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. However, I have seen something impressive in Summer League. Go ahead. I have. And boy, it came from Miami. Oh, it's a kid to go by the name of Tyler Hero. Stepping back, pulling threes, cutting through the defense like a hot knife through butter, finishing at the cup. This kid looked like he the real deal. He swagged up. You saw him draft night, you know what I'm saying? Boy had his had his jewels out. Look good, feel good, play good. He already embodies what it means to be a member of the Miami Heat. 
So far, it's early. So far, he's been the most impressive thing I've seen in summer league. But then you ain't been watching the Bulls because you ain't see you ain't see Kobe with a C, the real Kobe with a C, and you ain't see the big the big dog. That, do he start? Huh? Is he gonna start for y'all? Who? He don't even start. Who? That Kobe kid. Absolutely. And you ain't he see is not gonna start. You ain't see the big dog Daniel Galford. I think that's his name. Second round pick. Put up 21. First of all, the big dog is Glenn blocks. Robinson. A beast. First of all, the big dog named Glenn Robinson. Oh, my God. He got a son in the league. Bro, I think our second round pick might be the still of the drive, bro. I do. He might be the still of the drive. He a beast. Yo, if you haven't been tuned in, you watch the young man. I'm telling you, the Bulls is on our way. We got a young team, and, and don't get it twisted. I'm not saying we're about to compete for no championship this year, but I like the young pieces we have. I like the young pieces. You talking about the Gafford guy? Yeah. Yeah, but can I be honest with you? Uh, Didn't we say the same thing about Carter Jr. last year? What? When Carter Jr. was playing amazing during the season, but he got hurt. That's, bro, in, okay. bro injuries, gotta, these dudes got to stay healthy. You know, but they're coming from college playing what? 30 games, 30-something games, to playing 82 games in the league. They ain't used to that shit. But don't the Gafford kid play the same position yeah. as Carter Jr.? Bro, bro, bro. So we can't have a backup? I'm just trying to we understand why you're so excited. Spay, he a backup. The most exciting thing for you is two guys that's going to come backup. off the bench. I'm talking about Tyler Hero out here dropping 20-plus. Don't, don't compare your backup center to our starting two guard. Don't do that. Spade. Not in the mood. You know what? <laughs> I wish I still had white side. How about that? Yeah, well, we don't. I wish I, All right. I wish I did. We don't. We got Bam out of bio. Well, we he dropped. Listen, Carter Jr., whoever it is, Carter Jr., marketing, Gafford, we, we dropping Bam off, okay? I, I like Bam. Shit. Bam from Jersey. You know what else got me excited about the summer What's league, that? bro? What's that? Seeing the players, and look, this might be lame, but I'm being serious. Seeing, like, the vets come out to these summer league games and kind of watch these young guys, I, I like that shit, bro. I like that. Because let's talk about your league, for instance. Don't nobody give a shit. Bro, it still ain't no NFL news. Is it going to be a season this year? I don't Spade. even know if y'all playing this Spade, year. Is it going to be a damn exciting season? exciting shit in the NBA is the offseason. More than the season and the finals. This NFL Stop shit happened it. during the season. The Super Bowl is the most watched shit ever. The NBA Finals, not so much, babe. This was the lowest NBA Finals. That's because it was finals. in Canada. This was the lowest NBA Finals ever, ever. Come on, the NBA offseason. How the NBA? How the NBA offseason bigger than the NBA Finals? That shit is. That shit. Bro, they not counting the views in Canada. They didn't count the views oh. in Canada. Oh my God! Come on, bro. You fell for that? You Canada thought we were watching? You matter before. You know, you was now watching, right? views in Canada matter? Come on, bro. It, when one of the teams is Canadian, it does. No, it doesn't. Well, how? Yes. People still watch basketball, so you think people tuned out because it was the Raptors? Yeah, some people did. Nah. Nah, hell nah. Lowest Cleveland ain't NBA watching. Finals ever. All them folks in Cleveland ain't watch. Shit, they was watching. They wanted, they wanted uh, Golden State out of there. Listen, man. Bro, what else happened since the last time we've been on this great show talking to these great people? Listen, man. Spade, I want to talk about the NBA Awards real quick. Oh, oh, LaPaz, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? I got to cut you off. Can I please go back to something? Go. Drake. Oh. You tried to bribe oh Kawhi Leonard to stay in Toronto by offering some of OVO when Kawhi don't even know who the hell you are, bro. Kawhi said, every time I come talk to y'all, who is the light-skinned, smiling guy that keep touching me? I'm about to chop this fool <laughs> if he put his hands on me again. I don't know who this guy is. Kawhi don't look like he give two shits about Drake or OVO oh, music. Say, Why did music? somebody think that was a good idea? What kind of music Kawhi, Kawhi like, bro? Why don't give a shit about OVO? What kind of music Kawhi like? He probably listen to Sade. R&B. Sh I know damn well he listen to R&B. Yeah, Sh Sade. I know he listen to R&B. Erica Badu. Yeah, Erica yeah. Badu. Probably uh, uh, Macy Gray. And if he listen to rap, he listen to 
people like Talib Kweli. <laughs> okay. Most deaf. Pharaoh Munch. Most deaf. Yeah, Pharaoh Munch. Fact. He don't listen to no OVO, bro. And listen, me and the parents listen to rap, and we don't know who on OVO yo, other fact. than you. Say, yo, how you... Who is on OVO? Bro, how you offer somebody a piece of your uh, label that's only you? Who else on OVO? Ain't like... Bro, the last person I knew on OVO had the club going up on a Tuesday. But it ain't that no oh, more. Oh, that dude... Oh, he I don't even know his name. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even yeah. know his name. Hey, yo, I know somebody gonna come through like, OVO got... got say, Stop Satan it. Satan death. I'm pissed off at Drake. Yeah, Drake, on, you man. are a creative person, yeah, bro. Man. The best shit you could come up with with half of your record label, not even half, a piece of your record label for Kawhi, yeah, come on, man. who can't rap along with any of your songs. Come on, dog. You got to know, that should have, that, that would have made me leave that, right there. Leave. If I'm playing in a place out. that that's what you think I want, some of OVO, who are you? Why are you in here? Why I'm talking to these people? Why is this guy here? Cause while we're looking at Drake during the game, like, who is this man touching the coach? Who is that? Yeah, that's it. And do I need to chop him? <laughs> All right, let's move forward, bro. Kawhi I just thought about that. And his signature on his email definitely say, "What the hell?" Definitely, like, Mr. Bro, Miyagi. I'm so shit. pissed off that I heard that. Yeah, I mean, that, that's that's I not the move. That. That's not. I mean, people was offering was Kawhi like, like, "Yo." You stay in Toronto, you can stay in this penthouse luxury suite free of charge for however long you here and all that crap. And uh, I don't know, man. I just, I asked Spade, y'all know I'm old now. I asked Spade, I said, yo, who the hell is on OVO that be like, okay, we can, we can get some money with this. Aside from Drake? Come on, man. Aside from Drake. I just, I, I, I'm upset with that. I'm upset. Yeah, Spade. Spade, I want to... I want to move on and I want to talk about the NBA Awards real quick. We don't got to take a lot of time, Spade. But I want to talk Let's about the it. NBA Awards. I, I think the it NBA was Awards was a fail, man. And um, You think? Yeah, I think it was a fail. And the crazy... Well, I know it was a fail. Mad positive. Yeah, I know it was a fail. They had awards of, with people in it that didn't even show up to the awards, Spade. And I want to say, they either got to move this award show to af right after the season... Push the playoffs back one week, do the and do the award show then, or just scrap the whole idea. Just give the awards out. Just announce that shit. Don't do no award show. And I get it. They want. They trying to get a little extra money, TV money, TV spot, whatever. But that shit was a fail. The little, I'm I'm a jack it up. God forgive me. But the little Indian dude. I think it was an Indian dude. Maybe Arabic came there. Was ain't nobody know who he was. He was like, I know y'all asking who am I, and he was cracking jokes on NBA players. That shit was not it. That dude was not funny. Like, that shit was a fail, man. So they either, either they got to move I, I it right like behind the season, push the playoffs back a week, or they got to scrap that shit. Your thoughts? Yeah, also, man, it looks bad when the people who up for these awards aren't there mm -hmm. except for one person. Like... When only one of the candidates for the MVP trophy is there, it's a dead giveaway that that guy that's there won. Word. It just it, it looks bad. The only man. one was there was whack. Rudy Gobert. And because too. you stretch it out, Rudy Gobert for D. I think he was the only one there for defensive player of the year. Yeah. Like, yeah it, and also, uh, it, it looks bad, man. You stretching it out so long. The, the players, you know, a lot of these guys that played the eighty-two game season, they've gone through the finals. They're tired. They, they body. Need, it's it's just a bad business move, and I need y'all to tighten y'all shit up, tighten up. Yeah, I, I, that shit. Tighten up, bro. That shit ain't it, man. That shit ain't it. I, I want to say Siakam was the only one there for most improved. Like that shit was a fail. That shit was a fail. It was, a, it was terrible, man. I, I, I just it was terrible. I don't know why they. I don't know why they wait. They waited like two weeks after the finals. Jesus Christ. I, yeah. I, it, it was it was a waste of time, and I mean I get it. It's nothing on man. man tune into the big three or something. But Spade, unless you got something else, you can wrap the show. Unless you got something else. Yeah, let's get out of here, man. Uh, we're gonna end the show with our strong on performer of the week segment. I know what you guys are thinking. Ain't really ain't been games like that unless we're gonna jump into some other leagues and give our strong on performer of the week. Um, 
LaPace, I'm going to do something different. I want to go first. Okay. You're not on the hot seat this time. I'm on the hot seat. I want to go okay. first. I want to get my strong offer for of the week to Kawhi Leonard for pulling off one of the greatest heists hmm. in the history of sports heist. Not only did he have everybody thinking that he was just deep in thought, mulling it over, doing soul searching when he was truly waiting on Jerry West to make the trade of the century, but also he told all of Canada when he won that he was out. During the parade, he said, you guys need to enjoy this moment. He told y'all, this shit ain't gonna last. Enjoy this moment, cause I'm out. He told y'all to your faces and y'all still believe. Boy, them gullible Canadians, you got tricked again. For that performance, Kawhi, you, man. And the funny thing is, Kawhi can puppet master this shit and still be loved in the public eye, and that is amazing. For that performance, Kawhi, you are my strong arm performer of the week. That's a, that shit was That's beautiful. a good one, and nobody in Canada should have a negative word Better not. about Let Kawhi Leonard. A negative word. I don't want to hear one Say negative smart, word Tory Lanez. about Kawhi Leonard. If his braid, if it the part in his braid is crooked, a Canadian better not say it. Okay? A Canadian better not say it. I'ma tell you that. I've been not here. I'ma tell you that. Let's man, I got a good I got a good one this week. I got um my strong up performer of the week is gonna go to the United States women's soccer team, babe. Them them ladies, yes, sir. them ladies is out there doing their thing and they are in the championship. For the World Cup, shout out to them. The goalie, I don't have names, y'all forgive me, but the goalie made a, a a great save on a penalty kick. I mean, them ladies just been mowing through the competition. They played what, what, what is reported as their toughest competition in the last game, and people are expecting. First of all, I don't want the I don't want the ladies to sleep, but people are expecting the uh, United States women's soccer team to run through the Netherlands, and I hey. I'm going to go with what the experts are saying. I expect them to win. So, for what they've done so far, the United States women's soccer team, you are my strong arm performers of the week. They've been kicking ass. It's crazy, Spade, because we don't watch soccer. We ain't soccer people. We ain't no, we football don't. people. But it's something about that World Cup that grab you. You be like, yo, let me tune in and see what, the, what America doing, what the USA doing. That's that USA pride, man. It grab you? It grabs you? Yeah. You tune in? Yeah, it do. Where's you in? Nah, not me. Not me, oh, bro. Guys. So shout out. Every time I tune in, all I see is flopping. Shout out. To, I don't like Shout that. out to the. Oh, come on, man. Shout out to the ladies for doing their thing, man. Spade, before I close the show, you got anything else to add? I mean, it's been a long one, man. Hey, listen, man. I, I know. I know. We held y'all a long time. I, I just got one last thing and I'll shut up. I feel like this NBA offseason is a reminder I, it don't happen as much anymore. Like, the guys uh, and, and girls who are loyal listeners of the show, supporters of the show, you know, they come through and they pay us our respects. But every once in a while, somebody hit me with, y'all ain't ESPN. or Y'all said this, but ESPN said. And I just want to remind you guys, so many of your quote-unquote professional reporters with all the credentials and all the connections, they was wrong as shit, Talk okay? <laughs> like they often be. Stop letting people tell you the sky green when you can just look your ass up and see that it's blue. Uh, I want to use this as a reminder to promote people using their own brain. That's why everybody got their own head, unless you've met somebody without a head, in which case that is sad, and I'm sorry for that person. But other than that, everybody got their own brain, man, and that's what we exercise here on this show. We encourage you guys to do the same. You can hit the comments. You can tell us we're wrong. Word. There are times I've hit the comment section, and somebody have read me so clean in that comment section that I have to digress. I'd be like, damn. You're right. I ain't even think about it like that. And that's what we want this show to be, man. It's just homies who love sports talking sports. It's not no, ah, oh, we know everything. We always right. And them guys on TV ain't always right either. All right, I'll be quiet. I'm done. You ain't lying. Because, I mean, you let them tell it. Kawhi to the Lakers was a done dilly. Spade, I also want to share this. So, Kawhi, before we, before we close, Kawhi agreed to, a, to sign four years, 142 with the Clippers, which is only going to get him... $67.2 million approximately net after federal income tax, payroll taxes, state and local taxes. So out of 142, he's going to get $67.2 million paid. And people are saying that that is 53 damn percent of his money that they are taking in taxes. 
which is crazy in LA. That's insane. Yeah. We seen something like that, Spade, a few weeks ago with Steph Curry. That Steph Curry only got like 14 million and his 30 something million dollars. It was just, woo, no wonder. No wonder. It's crazy because everybody who's seen him want to go over there to LA, Spade. It's crazy. I mean, I get it if his home is home. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Dorothy said there's no place like home, mm -hmm. so I get it. Yeah. But, and you know that in. I might not just be the NBA, might be the NFL as well, but it's some weird rule where, like, you got to pay something to every state that you play the game in because yeah, technically yeah. you earn the money in that state. Yeah. And, you know, teams, there's also something where if teams play two games or more in Tennessee, like, Tennessee got, like, some unusually high. It's weird, man. Like, that's another reason why they say it's tough for people to play for the Grizzlies, something about playing in Tennessee. I, I, the shit is crazy, man. But yes, California Yard, they're taking a whole lot of money for a place that can't stop the ground from shaking. <laughs> you ain't lying. Just saying. Shout out to Uncle Sam. Always going to get his chips off the top. Off the top. But listen, man, we want to thank y'all for tuning in to this episode of Strong Arm Sports. We know it was a long one. Yes. We had a lot of things to cover. I know we said Top Fives was returning this week, but it was already going to be a long social. We're going to push that back a week. Next week, we will be back with our Top Five Whatever position we choose with the NFL, we, we will we will be back. We want to thank y'all for tuning in. As usual, if you new here, bang the subscribe button. If you're a regular here, hit the like button. It's also a little bell up there. You can click that bell. It sends a notification to your mobile device to let you know a new episode has been uploaded to our YouTube channel. If you don't want to see two dudes arguing in the box, it's okay. We got audio podcasts everywhere. SoundCloud, Podomatic, iTunes, Spotify. We are everywhere. There's no reason why you should ever yeah. miss a show. There's no reason why you should be like, yo, the show too long. It's a pause button. You press pause, come back later. We, we covered a lot of things in this show. We want you guys to share your thoughts in the comment section down below. We want to thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for your continued support. We out. We see y'all next episode. We out. Peace.